crashed Whoa. on the couch I have Ewan. I'm Venom. And Parser. Yeah. Okay, so just good to go. Let's go. <laughs> what, what, what? <laughs> Wait, the timer hasn't started. Start the timer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Cut, cut right. So this is 100%. Uh, basically, the goal of the game is to collect. Well, the goal of the run is to collect all 14 talismans, 10,000 gems, and 64 orbs, and beat all the bosses. Yep. Start the run. <laughs> so right at the start, it's just basic movement. We saw a flame charge there, which is essentially if you flame and then charge and break something that you can with flame, the gem will think you've charged through it and home in. We've seen some double jumps and some out of bounds there. Double jump is a mechanic in this game where if you hold X and then press square right after, you'll get essentially a jump with double height, so we call it a double jump. And then the out of bounds there, we'll be seeing a lot because of the double jump in a lot of levels and it just allows us to out of bounds and go straight to the end of the level um, without having to go through the whole level. So what you can see here as well is um, the technique called the flame charge jump, which allows you to angle your flame upwards, and that's allowing you to hit these lamps. So usually you need a power-up, which allows you to fly, but we can skip killing enemies to get that power-up just by doing that trick. So we get to see a lot of movement here, and we can see this uh, little rat thing that's running around as well. Um, we're killing lizards to sort of appease him, and we'll talk a bit later, or talk a bit later about why um, you know we've started right at the end um, and are getting him to run through the level. Yeah, so a lot of these levels are routed based on challenges as opposed to you know gems and the talismans, and so we usually skip right to the end if there's a challenge at the end, just because it usually loops right back to the start anyways. So this is another one of the lamp challenges. Uh, this one's a little bit tighter. We collect a lot of gems, and these lamps are on a timer. So after you flame them the first time, they are actually going to go out. Um, so this is quite a tight cycle to make. You yeah. run around collecting gems, and you've got to hit the sixth lamp before the timer runs out. And there nice. we are. We've made the one cycle. Where's the applause audience? So, yeah. <laughs> you've got you've got maybe a second or two of leeway there. So if you make you know one significant mistake. Um, you'll probably need to go back to the first three lamps and relight them after you've lit the last ones. Yeah, so now you'll see that we're back at the start of the level. Um, yeah, so basically the way that this, this orb challenge works with this lizard is that he takes you from the end of the level all the way back to the start, which is why we did that out of bounds at the very start nice. to get to the end. So we basically backtracked through the whole level. And that'll happen a few times throughout the run. There's different challenges that require you to go through the level backwards. Uh, yeah, so that'll be a common common thing. Yeah, a lot of the routing for gems is just getting them along these challenges. So, uh, nice thing you got the do. last lizard there, grab the last few gems, and then we get warped back to the orb. Once we've collected that, we can do another double jump out of bounds and head back to the end of the level. Okay, so Dress is now going to go for a textbook skip. They probably won't get it. It's very, very precise. No. no <laughs> it's like it's the kind of thing that saves like less than a second or like a second and a half at most, and yeah. you get it one in every hundred runs. <laughs> so yeah. It's not a big deal. And what you aim to do is you proxy between the flag and the talisman guy, and you talk to him at the same time, so you yeah. get boosted up onto the step, and that skips the text box. Yeah, you jump out of his talk radius, essentially. So now we're going to the first home world, which, which has all the portals to the other levels in. Uh, this is called Summer Forest. <laughs> and basically we're just going to race through this home world after we collect a few things on the way. And we just want to get to the first boss as fast as possible, we're going to skip into him. Basically the way this run's going to work is we're going to skip to the very end of the game, get a load of abilities for beating the final boss, and then we're going to come back through the game and collect all of the stuff that we've left behind. Yeah, we're also going to pick up a permanent fireball power-up which will help us, you know, speed things up a little bit. Yeah, but you'll see that later. Yeah. For now we're just going to get enough gems to buy, to buy the swim power-up from money bags, and that's going to come in handy later. Um, and collect a couple of gems that happen to be in our way anyways, so that'll cut out the homo movement later on. Um, oh, no, <laughs> don't worry. Yeah, so essentially um, the skips in this game, all, well, a lot of the skips that you're going to see are going to rely on that double jump glitch, which essentially you go neutral on the, on the D-pad, so you're not moving in any direction. And then you're going to do a jump input and then a charge input. And you kind of charge out of your jump, but it gives you a lot more height than you usually get. It's not technically a double jump, but that's what we call it, because <laughs> reasons. Yeah. So we're doing some stuff here where you can see him opening and closing those doors. That's so that we can get onto this one, close it, and then it 
sort of doesn't have a bottom on it and so you clip somewhat out of bounds and then again they don't have sides on it so you can double jump and get out of bounds to enter crush. Yeah, and the boss loading zones are, well the first two at least are pillars, and so if you touch any part of that pillar you just get... Put you fall the down into yeah. the yeah, boss arena. But this fight's a little bit technical. Um, when this run was showcased uh, two or three years ago, um, it was all just about keeping the boss on the same pad and we just took damage abuse tactic tactically. Now we still take damage, we still do damage abuse, but as you can see here, if you time it correctly, then we get to skip a bit of um, attack uh, attack by Crush, and basically we can hit him earlier. So each one of those saves like a fraction of a second, but it does add up. I think in total this technique saves about three seconds in the whole fight. And it's also worth mentioning the uh, thing flying behind Spyro, Sparks, which is indicates as your health. He also picks up gems, so it goes from gold to blue to green, and then no Sparks. Um, but yeah, it's like a health indicator and also helps you pick up gems which is handy. Yeah and to, to recover that health you just hit fodder like that, that sheep there and that gives you a butterfly which recovers your health by one unit. There's loads in every level so. Yeah. Basically in bosses if you go to green sparks or below which is one health or less then you are um, two health or less technically um, then sheep will start to fall which gives you uh, well the intention is to allow you to recover your health in the fight. Nice. Okay, so now we're going into the second home world, Autumn Plains, and again, we're just going to skip right through it. We're going to collect a couple of things that are in convenient places, and then we're just going to do a slightly technical skip to get into the second boss. And you'll see that as it happens. Yeah. Um, first, there's a bit of fancy platforming to be done to get up to the upper half of the castle. So usually, to get up into this castle, you need to buy the climb ability. But there's a few things you can do here. So we're going to double jump into a wall glide, where basically a wall preserves your height slightly um, during your glide, and that allows those allows you to get on top of that pole that we're stood on right now. And then we're going to double jump up here and flop. So basically if you let go of the charge button mid-jump, Spyro kind of becomes slidey and allows you, you can slide up these corners and surfaces so you can get a little bit more... or you can jump into a slightly higher If you're sort of, yeah, to. on the edge and can hold a direction into where you're going, yeah. if right. you flop he'll right become now. a bit more, yeah, like... he'll just sort of slide up onto the edge. So you'll notice that Drash got um, zapped by Zoe there, that's because we're going to Def Abuse. It, that island that you can see in the distance contains an orb and some gems, and it's miles out of the way, so it's much better to just Def Abuse there and respawn back up on top of this castle. Yeah, so Zoe acts as sort of a checkpoint system checkpoint, throughout yeah. the run. So we've got a long glide. <laughs> Fun fact, this glide often gets you copyright stro strike <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> but you can tactically avoid it by flaming, allegedly, which interrupts the sound. Because apparently those noises are copyrighted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. something about that background track that plays where because there are no other sounds when you're doing that glide, um, it's very clear. Apparently that track is just copyright yeah, uh, so, protected. So, so, so. so this is a skip into the second boss. It's, this was only discovered in like 2013 or something by Tuval. Um, essentially you're not supposed to be here. We're on the other side of a breakable wall. And what we're doing here is we're just clip clipping into the, inside this wall. And once we drop we're going to be stuck inside a wall, like halfway through a wall. And if we do like a charge and then glide here, that we, then we pop straight through the wall and get into the second nice. boss. And that was nice, that was first try. Good job. That was good. <laughs> okay, so this boss, um, Gulp, is quite RNG. You can, essentially your time relies on RNG, but also a lot on execution. It's a very technical boss. Um, you can always just lose time to the RNG, but a good player can often make, get good times even out of bad RNG. Yeah. Yeah, the only time you're completely you know ruined by rng is if there are three nice. bomb drops everything else you can sort of try and figure out a way to make it work yeah so essentially the goal here for speedrunners is to get double hits at each phase so usually these birds are going to drop eggs and the intended the intended way to defeat this boss is just to hit him once each time each phase but what you can actually do is you can time it so that you hit him with two objects in the same phase because the objects only actually get destroyed slash defaze or de uh, despawn sorry when gull pits the ground after you've damaged them the first time so with you can hit two barrels into it at the same time you can hit two rockets you can do all kinds of combos like that nice. that's, that's another double that was hard so gull pack now has four health left ideally we get two doubles you can also get triples and I don't know if a quadruple ever happened. <laughs> I yeah, doubt it. But um, yeah, you can get triple hits, which obviously spares you get needing a double there. So here's a bomb barrel du double. Bomb, bomb barrels are quite lenient because you've got a lot of time while the bomb, fu while, the, while the fuse blows. Yeah, and anything with rockets is fast, anyways. Yeah, yeah. Without a doubt, double barrels the hardest. Yeah. So this is actually a very good gold fight so far. Nice. Um, 
leave this at the oh, and didn't flame, right? Oh, so that works. Yeah. yeah, so that's a, that was a pretty, pretty, good pretty fast five nice. cycle. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. No applause allowed. It's all energy. <laughs> Alright, so what Drash is going to go for next is called a Penguin Proxy. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the way proxies work is um, you kind of go into a dead enemy or fodder's hitbox, and the game doesn't know what to do because you're not supposed to be in there, so it just gives you insane velocity upwards. And hopefully, Drash will. <laughs> Josh will be able to show it off. Yeah. So the way the game works is it will let you charge nice. through hitboxes oh, really <laughs> if you're holding charge. But if while you're doing that you hit X while you're holding a charge jump, you'll get like a single frame of gliding. And during that, the game recognizes, oh, you're inside this, you're not meant to be, and tries to eject you out. And then straight away you go back to charging, and that's where you sort of gain all that velocity from. Uh, so that was a really good penguin. Yeah, yeah. We should mention this area. So this is Dragon Shores. This is Sanders' <laughs> endgame area. You yeah. only really get in here after um, defeating the final boss. But portals in this game are stored underground when they're inactive. So what Drush did there was get out of bounds, go, um, go underneath the level, and then glide through the ball to get into this, that area. And what that was, that was a permanent fireball power up. You usually get that for 100% in the game, but we can break in there, and now we just have fireball for the entire rest of the game. So you're not going to see any more flames. Now we have a long range fireball that we can use to break all kinds of things that, we've not, that you're not intended to be able to break straight away. And now this part of the run, we're um, going to go into the final boss. And the reason for that is that it's basically going to make our sparks overpowered. So you might have noticed that the sparks of the dragonfly has been picking up, picking up gems for us the whole time. Nice. And they're swimming there. So yeah, the, the, the way swimming air works is <laughs> water in this game isn't bodies of water. What they do is it's just a plane of water that sits over an enclosed space. And so in their minds, if you go through that plane of water, you should be swimming because you'll be trapped in there. But if you can go through that plane of water while staying out of bounds, you'll just be able to swim wherever you want because the game thinks you're stuck in that contained space, but you aren't. So. So this is Ripto. So usually this is a very RNG fight. There's usually like bulbs being thrown down to you and you get different power-ups after you pick up free or he picks up free. We have fireballs so we can just spam them into him for these first two phases. And um, what you saw there actually is that Drash actually fight, turned around and fired a fireball at the end of the first phase. Mashed through the cutscene and actually hit this phase, this phase of Ripto. It's going to happen again here. So, oh, it didn't, never mind, it didn't happen here. But essentially, you can actually fire b fireballs early, mash through the cutscene, and, and the fireballs still move during the cutscene, so you can actually get early hits at the start of each phase, or each phase 2 and phase 3, I should say. You can actually predict where Ripto goes in phase 3, so hopefully Drash will be able to see which way he's going. Yeah, there's not always something to worry about it, but... Yeah. Yeah, so, um, so at the end of this fight, um, Sparx is going to basically become incredibly overpowered. He's just going to get <laughs> insane range and pick up gems all over the... Oh, um, from like far, far, far away from you. Yeah. And we should mention that this is where the early Ripto <coughs> and non-early Ripto category divide comes in. So this is early Ripto because we fight Ripto early, but there are no ER runs where you usually save Ripto for the end of the game, yeah. and that's a category split on the leaderboards. All right, it's a category split. Sorry, it's the same category, but oh, the, there's a filler. Um, yeah, so the run back in 2017, 2016, 2016. 2016. Uh, yeah, um, that didn't do that route. This route saves several minutes over that, essentially. And there's no reason not to do this route unless you are morally opposed to not ending on the final boss. <laughs> so yeah, you can decide for yourself how you feel about that. <laughs> so now essentially the run is essentially going back through the game and doing all of the levels that we've left behind and collecting 100% of the objects in the game, essentially. This first level robotic farm is a little tricky. Um, there's a supercharged power up that which, which we need to use to knock down some doors. So we're actually going to go through the level killing and with the aim of killing 15 enemies while we're collecting all of the gems and orbs. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah for are... whatever reason, the fireball can break pretty much everything in this level, except for two barn doors that are along the supercharge ramp. So that's why we need to activate that. Otherwise, we could just completely skip that supercharge. Although it'd probably end up being quick to use it anyway, um, just because of how fast you go when you're using it. Yeah, so the way the enemies work in this game as opposed to Spyro 1 and Spyro 3 is that instead of dropping gems, they drop spirit particles and power-ups in each level cost a certain number of spirit particles. Some have 2, some have like 18. Um, this one has 15, so Drash will want to... We, well, we've routed it, so 15 enemies are killed along the way. Yeah, so that challenge usually involves running. <laughs> <Mom>. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't do it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so that challenge usually involves running around after the purple books trying to flame them or whatever. 
with the fireball, you can kind of just hit them from range. It makes the challenge very, very trivial. Um, this level also contains a mystery jar, which we're going to see. So usually with mystery jar levels, what a mystery jar is, it's a jar that's at the end of the level, and it's going to take you all the way back through the through the level, hitting these jars as they keep spawning, and eventually you're rewarded with a bunch of gems at the end, which is always at the back, back at the start of the level. The reason why we haven't skipped straight to the end of this level is because of this, this enemy requirement. We also need to kill enemies before we get to the end of the level. You'll see we're now on 15, and to our left, you can see the mystery jar, and also next to it is a power-up gate. So also, Drash, just to note, but yeah. Yeah, Drash went for a sequence break there, where you fireball the mystery jar and then talk to the guy that gives you the orb at the end of the level. And what that made him do is skip the actual cutscene to get the end of level orb and skip the mystery jar cutscene. So now you can just see we're running back to the start of the level essentially, just following the path back, getting them the, all these mystery jar instances. We're not going to go straight to the end, um, we still want to do the supercharge at some point, which we're going to now, and then we'll get the final instance of the mystery jar as, um, at the end of the supercharge. <coughs> so basically these pumpkins, turnips, wherever they are, they're designed to be broken with this supercharge, but uh, as you probably saw, we broke a few of them with our fireball earlier, which allows us to cut the route short here and just like skip across the middle of the track like that. And these are the bandos that Paso was talking about, which you can't break with your fireball. So that's why we needed the supercharge power-up. Should you get that fight? I think so. I think so, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. I think he's good. Yeah, so, so you just heard, what you just heard in the background there was the final instance of the mystery jar breaking, and all these gems are all over the floor. And this is the very start of the level. Yeah, this shows the power of the fireball. Normally yeah, you yeah. have to supercharge that. But. Yeah, so we broke that and it warped us back up to where the orb is. So that's actually a, a, a quite a big time save to be able to snipe that and get warped back up here. Yeah. Which is that's why we left that last pumpkin thing. Yeah, and then something to note as well is we've got these gems on the track here as well. Uh, in Spyro One, when you break stuff while supercharging, it will home in as if you normally charged it. But in Spyro Two and Three, as we can see there, when you break them, the gems will just pop out and remain on the track. So you do need to do another lap once you've done um, that first one to get those last few gems. So now we're going to go into a level called Metropolis, and this level is usually locked between a tw uh, behind a 25 orb requirement. But again, the portal is inactive, so it's stored under underneath where the portal would usually be. So we can just go out of bounds again, um, where we did to get into Ripto, to skip into Ripto, um, and just glide underneath where the portal should be. And that will allow us to get into the level Metropolis early, as we're nowhere near 25 gems, um, orbs yet. So there we are, so we're underneath the level, and then we just glide in. And this level is probably one of the hardest levels in the runner, yeah. I'd say. This level's awful. It's, uh, there's a, it's quite a strict cycle where you've got to break some UFOs at the end of the level. So if you make a mistake at a certain point in the level, you can just get completely off cycle and have no real idea about where the UFO is going to be. Um, also, these elevators, you can only move them with a head bash. Well, you're intended to move them with a head bash ability, which is on triangle. So you usually just stomp them with your head, but fireball also works on them. So, which saves a lot of time because head bash is very clunky. You're kind of stationary and like landing on the elevator doors. Yeah, it also locks your position so you can't move, but if you fireball them, you can't yeah. move. Also, um, we're gonna, so what we're gonna do here is we're also gonna skip to the end and then backtrack a little bit. We've cleared up the first half of the level, but it's more convenient for us to um, go to the end of the level now, deal with the UFOs, and then come back and deal with what was at the bottom of that elevator that Drash turned around did a 180. Yeah. This ox, by the way, has um, you, it throws bombs at you and you're supposed to throw them back. But with Fireball, you can just blow it up. And that's a thing you're going to see throughout the run. There's a lot of challenges and stuff that are made completely trivial with this Fireball ability. You can kind of just blow stuff up without a care in the world. Whereas usually you're supposed to go through some elaborate set of tricks yeah. to deal with everything. So these are the UFOs we talked about. Uh, someone want to talk about the UFO cycles? No. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> um, they run a cycle from the beginning of the level. And can't multitask. Yeah. Um, depending on how you play, um, they will move at different rates, and they're all on completely independent cycles, so they can kind of desync from each other, which makes the uh, level kind of annoying. So you just have to play the uh, start really consistently. So this cycle, um, there's another UFOs chance commit where you have to kill five UFOs, and this one is completely consistent. This is They all spawn in the same place, and they go. Yeah, there's... Oh some, well, <laughs> there's some variance with it. With uh, There's a couple here that can take, uh, like, two different paths. Um, but in general, it's very predictable and very consistent. Um, so you see there, Drash got like some weird squeeze proxy between a UFO and a balloon, and that knocked him backwards, and now he's off-cycle, so um, I'm not sure entirely what's going on in his head, but maybe he maybe knows where the UFOs are. Drash is a piece, <laughs> it's okay, no I don't have a idea of what I want to do. But essentially, a lot of this level, as soon as it, it can go wrong often, and you 
you just really have to start improvising at that point and try and salvage as much time as you can. Yeah, and there's been many routes to this level, so it kind of just makes things together. Yeah. And you can bleed time without knowing it. Like this room just seems like a big room that you have to clear out. But when you like miss, miss a cycle and start like having to wander around in all kinds of directions for gems and for UFOs, then you can actually bleed away a lot of time. But that was fine. That, was, that, was that, that, recover, yeah. that recovery worked out. I just don't know if I fit all the blinks. I don't think I hit this one. The question now is, where, like, often what happens to you is that after you improvise, you don't, you're not entirely sure which gems you've left behind. I think I've got all the blinks. Yeah, yeah, so, so now we're going to go back down this elevator. Um, this is the intended way to get into this final room that we were just in. But we're just going to, um, we skipped an elevator ride eventually. I said, this elevator that's coming down now was the one we could have taken. But it's much easier to just do it like this. There we nice. are. That's nice. We didn't miss a jump. Surprise. Good job. You didn't miss a jump. I'll take credit. <laughs> <laughs> So now we're going to be approaching the first speedway of the run. We'll get to that soon. First, I guess there's a tricky uh, jump, a tricky yeah. jump, and then we're going to swim in a river. There's not much to do that. <laughs> so yeah, we've, I think we're finally done with these stairs. That is tighter than you think. <laughs> yeah, that, so that jump's actually very tricky, um, quite tricky in my opinion. Yeah, they're both kind of. Yeah, there's like just a little bit on that doorway that you can actually stand on. And outside of that, you'll actually just flop and fall down. Yeah. And so it's tricky to get on that specific spot to actually be able to get up there. I don't think you can stand on it for long either. I'm pretty sure if you stand on it for too long, you just throw a draw. It's like a few frames, probably. So this is a speedway. There's two parts to every speedway. There's a time attack, which we're doing now, where we have to just basically blow up objects and then in, within the time limit. Um, and then there's a second part, which is an orb challenge, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, having fireball in these speedways actually helps quite a lot. You can save quite a few seconds in each speedway by uh, just having fireball and being able to hit things from range. Yeah, there's also speedways that the routes between having fireball and not having fireball just change completely yeah. and it changes the order you do stuff in, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, so these vultures can be a bit tricky for, for new runners. Um, that was a nice one cycle there. <laughs> Best time I've done that in a uh, long time. Yeah, like, that saves a lot of time. You can lose several seconds to not hitting those vultures on the, on the first pass. And now we're going to stay in the speedway and we're going to approach Hunter and he's going to assign us an orb challenge. Uh, it's going to be a little bit noisy, yeah. but basically we're going to shoot some balloons in our, U in our spaceship, UFO, whatever it is. Can we get some spaceship, let's go in the chat, please? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you being polite? <laughs> You're being polite, just pew pewing a little bit. Yeah, I'll try not to hold the button. Oh, no. oh well at the end. Right. One per balloon. Yeah. <laughs> that's not actually possible. There we are, so yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, if you're a runner of this game and you're like live, still with your, live with your parents, then you you might try and like <laughs> you, you might try and just be sparing with your bullets, you know. You don't want to yeah. wake up the house. Yeah. So basically, everyone that runs <laughs> yeah, this game, like, exactly. <laughs> yeah, all the balloons are like consistent, so Drash will know where they spawn um, and how fast they're moving. So yeah, there, there is one balloon at the end that there. we tried yeah. it early. It saves a little bit of time by talking yeah. like this kind of breaks up the flow of the run a little bit. It's a little bit slow paced. It's nice, yeah. relaxing time. Until you miss one. Yeah. Until yeah. the one in a hundred runs yeah. where you Stop miss panicking. it. Yeah. <laughs> but especially after you've had like 30 minutes or 20 minutes at this point of just hard stuff one after the other. Yeah. It's nice to take a bit of a break before you get yeah. into the rest of the run. Okay, so that's the speed we're done with. So that's one of four speedways. So there's going to be three more of those. Most of them are a little bit more interactive than that one, the orb challenges. You don't just sit there shooting things blankly. Yeah, this one's notorious to have been the easiest. Yeah, that, that's probably the easiest speedway in general, I'd say. <coughs> yeah, sure. By far, sure. main fact. <laughs> Both the time attack and the um, and the orb challenge. So now we've got two levels left to clear out Winter Tundra. Um, there's also some rocks that we're, that we're going to see shortly at the top of the <laughs> Yeah, there are rocks. Not the rocks. Yeah. So at the top of these stairs, there's going to be some rocks. You can't actually break those with Fireball, they're only breakable with Head Bash. But whereas that Head Bash crate, which is designed to be Head Bashed, is breakable. Yeah. So there's not too much consistency, but it's not that big a deal. Should so be worth mentioning that Head Bash is. Um, a, an ability that you can buy that we skipped by defeating oh, yeah. Ripta. Defeating Ripta gives you all abilities of swim, climb, and head bash. Yeah. But because we already bought swim, um, it just yeah. gives us climb and head bash. An and the other thing, where we climbed. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. The other thing to notice um, with that as well is normally Canyon Speedway. Again, you'd need to pay money bags for it. But because of the way it works in that end cutscene, you see money bags give you all your gems back. Um, yeah. The game essentially says, "Oh, well, he shouldn't appear anywhere else anymore." and takes all instances of him that would still be in the game completely out of it. Just goes on vacation. So this orb is, a, orb is a little notorious. Oh yeah. Um, it's a trading challenge. Essentially it's going to send you in circles around this map trading all kinds of items for each other. So this egg we're going to trade for like a seed of some kind. Yeah. We're going to give it to a bird and it's going to give us a seed. 
We didn't trade the seeds. So spoil it all. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll let them figure it out. <laughs> Fun story. When I was a kid, I could not figure this out, and my grandma had to help me. <laughs> Yeah, um, the actual, like, objects in, like, the pickable or the pickups by Sparrow, which means he can't actually use Fireball, otherwise he'll just spit them out, so yeah. Drash will tactically spit out each object when he needs to use the Fireball to snipe. Yeah, yeah. there's something ironic about this level, how there's this trading section where you can't flame anything, and then there's a section where you're supposed to chase things and flame them. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, like, unless you know how to do it, killing, the, um, beating those guys, or beating, beating the options where you've got to get these spark plugs and defeat those kangaroo-looking things, um, can actually be quite tricky. Like you can spend hours, well not hours, but minutes, <laughs> running around after them, trying to hit them with flame while they just laugh at you. <laughs> so fireball is actually very helpful there. Yeah, and he did a, another little sequence break where he fireballed two of them and then talked to the orb guy, which cancels out the little animation that you saw there, where it's like, hey. Yeah. So we saw there that pause. Nice. Um, <laughs> doing that pause was again the same thing. It's a little faster to pause and unpause to skip the animation of the spark plug flying towards you um, than it is to just, yeah, let it fly towards you. So that saves some time as well. <laughs> this yeah, so, duck. so now you see we've got a duck. We're going to take it back somewhere. This duck I is notorious. I want to spell your duck. Well, your yeah. Mystic Marsh experience by telling you where we're taking it. <laughs> Reminder that Marsh sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so many people have just lost runs to like items just embedding in walls and surfaces, and but it's yeah. just not fun. There we are. So we're giving the duck back to his family. It's going to spit out a turnip, <laughs> onion, something, <laughs> some vegetable, a root vegetable. <laughs> And um, yeah, so basically, as you can see, we've, we're doing two challenges at the same time. We're like beating, the, we're beating up these kangaroos and uh, <laughs> doing all this trading, and that's basically dictating the route for us right now. Like, we're conveniently collecting gems on the way, but essentially, we're just on some kind of wild goose chase to do all these challenges. And that's like the key to rooting in this game is just to like interweave all of your gem collection with your orb challenges. Yeah, it's all just multitasking. So that's a warp. We've walked back to this guy. Now we're, that's actually very convenient for us. We were at the bottom of the map. We've now warped back up to the top, and that puts us close to where we're taking this root vegetable. Name it. Name the root vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> Name the root vegetable. <laughs> it's... I've always said it's a turner, but I don't know. Every time I try a different, I, I, every time I try a different one, I always get yelled at for being wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so I've given up. So here's this cauldron. We're gonna make soup. <laughs> and now we have a coin. For some reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm uncertain as to whether there's a coin in the cauldron. Ask Insomniac. Coin soup. So we're winding, winding down to the last part of this level. One thing to note, by the way, is that there are spring power ups in this level, but they require like a million enemies. But yeah, we you can need to kill like yeah. essentially all but like yeah. two or three of the enemies to actually use it. Yeah, so the and double jump really has to skip a lot. Yeah. And then we are. We finally given the professor back his pencil, which came out of the fountain. <laughs> I guess we made a wish with the coin, and then it threw us a pencil. Yeah. Threw us a pencil. The professor's happy. He gives us an orb, and we're out. <laughs> yeah. Peace out. I think that's the most logical explanation of why the pencil comes out of the fountain. It's I've a ever heard. It's a wishing well. <laughs> yeah. I studied the spiral law deeply. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one last level in, in um, Winter Tundra before we start going back to the early home worlds, which you've seen. There's also the, there's an orb in this rock. There's, I mean, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's a big rock. You can just double jump on top of it and then head back. Usually you'd want to jump on top of it from the ledge, but you know, this is another small example of the double jump saving a bit of time. So one thing we've said, um, we've pointed out end of level orbs. Usually in like the first two home worlds, they're supposed to be talismans. But in Winter Tundra, they're like, yeah, let's not bother with that, and just gives us orbs instead. So. Yep. We always assumed that they were in a rush. They recently said that Winter Tundra was always designed to be smaller. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to believe. <laughs> <laughs> We've been told false lies. <laughs> so this little cloud temple is quite linear. You just kind of run through it, beating these, war um, killing these warlocks, and they like essentially open paths for you throughout the level as you destroy them. The whole idea of this level is that they're enchanting the map to work against you. Yeah. Uh, one annoying thing about these warlocks is they can camera lock. And so I'm not sure if we've annoying, really like talked about it yet, but we're sort of seeing here where Sparks is getting gems from very far away. Um, and he's doing that because of the fact that we've beaten Ripto early. So you'll see he's always pointing at gems, um, as well as getting them from very far away, and that's because of yeah the early Ripto split. There is an annoying thing that can happen in this level, where these warlocks kind of steal your camera from you. It doesn't happen, I don't think, if you like if you maintain a good angle. But if you are an, in an, an inexperienced runner and you take a bad angle towards them, then they can steal your camera. And these bells, uh, oh, nice. it's another instance of skipping power-ups, essentially. Nice. You're supposed to kill like 21 enemies yeah. and get a nice power-up. Yeah, there's a really and cool power-up in here that we never ever yeah. see. Yeah. Some trolls appear, you freeze them and jump on their heads. <laughs> but we have a fireball, so we can just blast the bells yeah. from these bells that we're supposed to hit from long range. It's weird that they don't actually 
spawn until you get the fire on. Right? Yeah, he's talking yeah. to the guy, I think but they're still there. there. Yeah, there's there, like invisible there. things sitting yeah. there, yeah, where the orcs spawn from. They're essentially half lorders. Um, a lot of things in this game. Yeah. And also, what you might have missed there is that Drash randomly, it looked like Drash randomly fireballed the roof. What he actually did was he hit a rocket through the floor, and that blew up a chest. And this, that chest um, is what we just, well, just before Drash teleported, there was a chest there, and there was a load of gems lying there, because we blew up a chest with a rocket. Yeah. There's another not not there's, right. there's a few Drash more rockets in the run. Okay. Where yeah, someone explained um, the super, super sprint. <laughs> yeah, where he fireballs the Warlock, and then talks to Agent Zero, and then jumps off. And this is actually, like, proximity based, so if he jumps back towards the Warlock, he'll get teleported. So here, the end of level orb guy. He's gonna get the orb, and then he's gonna run back and try and complete Agent Zero as fast as possible. Yeah. That's quite tight as well. This is essentially a, a follow, a, an esco, uh, not an escort mission, a following mission where you've got <laughs> a sneak behind. Where you've got a sneak behind this man, and he's gonna turn around and try and well see if anyone's following to a secret base. Yeah, while you sneak behind him, and kind of he is notorious. apparently he's deaf because you're you're firing fireballs yeah. all around behind him. Don't fire I mean, him can you see any ears on him, Newark? That is true. That is true. <laughs> he does notice if you fireball in the back of that, that's correct, right? Yeah, I yeah, yeah. the hard yeah, there. Yeah. So yeah, this is a secret burst uh, <laughs> at the end of this gate. Very There's secret. There's not much to it. it, it <laughs> he's got, he's got some nice pop plants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can yeah, actually double jump nice around noise, and sure. get into here, oh, yeah. but um, nice there's level. no point because he doesn't spawn there. Yeah. Cloud Temples. That is the end of Cloud Temples. It's also Maybe nearly the end of Winter Tundra as well. Yeah, we're gonna collect a couple more gems and then go back to Summer Forest now, which is the first home world, which we saw. You'll recognize the scenery. Uh, it's pretty much where we were, right, <laughs> af right after Glimmer. And then we're gonna clean up what we left behind there. Uh, so the le levels that are coming up are sometimes referred to as the gauntlet. There's the two pro <laughs> probably the two most RNG levels. One has a lot of uncontrollable R RNG, and another is like, has RNG, you can deal with it, but it's precise to the point where it's essentially RNG. And um, then there's an annoying speedway, or at least it might have been used an annoying speedway. So yeah, we'll just clear out the last few headbash rocks. Oh, quite safe. And then these vortexes, uh, or vortices, <laughs> are designed to take you back back between home worlds, basically. So you just hop in them and go wherever you want to go. <laughs> so yeah, you'll recognise this scenery we were here earlier. This is where we bought swim all those, all those minutes ago. <coughs> those memories. Yeah. If we could turn back time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is Colossus. This level's full of monks. It's pretty. It's got some pretty catchy jingles in it. Uh, <laughs> that's how we call it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, this level also has something well similar in flavour to the trading quest that was in Mr. Marsh. There's some, there's some statues that you have to basically hit. And um, you essentially talk to a an instance of the professor. He'll activate a statue challenge, and then there'll be a load of statues around the map that you have to flame to, ex nice. to exercise <laughs> evil demons. <laughs> so what Trash uh, did there was um, this went is out another of one of those levels that has a spring power up that's designed to get you to the top of the map. But because we have the double jump and we can flop and all that kind of good stuff, we can just essentially hop to the top of the level. Yeah. So what Trash did at the start of the level was he double jumped around this, um, I guess, this idle face, and that let him skip talking to one of the. Uh, NPCs at the start of the level. What I do want to note there as well, just quickly, um, you'll see here, we'll go down into this different room, and normally there would be some gems right behind where we just came in there, but if you fireball the wall and then charge, you can get a flame charge on some baskets that are behind the wall that will explode because of the radius of the fireball, and the, you'll see the gems just sort of come through the wall towards you. It's a really cool use of the flame charge. Yeah, definitely. Um, one thing to note, by the way, is that so because this is a PS1 game, they had limited memory, and the reason why we can do a lot of these out of bounds and like you saw Drash go through a ceiling there <coughs> is that they didn't bother. Oh well, it's not that they didn't bother. They tactically decided not to add hitboxes to a lot of <coughs> things that they didn't think you'd be able to reach, and that's it. That to save on memory. So essentially, uh, because we've got this double jump and all kinds of abilities <laughs> to get higher than we're intended to be able to get to, there's a lot of non-solid surfaces that we can just jump through. Or run through, or like that kind of stuff, which is why we're able to do a lot of the a lot of these um, skips. So this uh, this this orb mission that's coming up right now is a little bit notorious. A um, little bit. It's a hockey challenge. <laughs> it's a hockey challenge. Actually. Essentially, we're playing ice hockey. First, we're going to do a one v one against a goalkeeper, and then we're going to have a well. You'll see the next challenge after this one. There's a thing called quick skips that someone else can explain because uh, yeah. So quick shots. The way that they work is that um, if you it's very precise. No one really knows how it works besides like hey. Do these inputs and get lucky. Um, 
you can actually get the puck hit straight back towards you. Yeah. Um, and not then you can just fire straight in, and then... Not right now, but yeah, maybe so I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, hopefully. C1, I'm That's sure. Okay, you're hopefully. Hopefully. But um, <laughs> essentially, the reason it's so inconsistent is the guy that's throwing the puck out will throw it out at different speeds, and so you basically have to adapt every single time to try and figure out exactly when you're meant to start turning to manipulate the goalie to hit it towards you uh, instead of away like we've been seeing here. Yeah, you're supposed to be at quite a specific angle when he hits the puck, but it's like... Like I said, it's, there, no, we there, there we go. Yeah. So you can see that saves like eight seconds over the other one. Yeah. The nice thing about this challenge is that if it goes wrong, you can always just blame RNG. Yeah. <laughs> just feel good about yourself. Uh, <laughs> everyone seems to have a setup that works for like two days and just stops. Yeah. So there's like eighty thousand setups for this. Yeah. It's, it's really the work. sort of thing where people seem to find setups and say, "This is the setup. It's going to solve everything," <laughs> and it works for them for a week, and then it stops working Never completely, and they need to find a new. Unless one. you're like Canadian, work. where it works all <laughs> the time. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the second hockey challenge. There's now a opposition. Well, you've now got a goalkeeper, and you're basically in a two v two. This is a lot more consistent. Basically, the opposition keeper will always hit the puck towards his own teammate. So if you just like fireball his team, his teammate, and knock him over, and then go between him and his teammate, really? then um, the keeper will always give you it back. Unfortunately, oh, this can oh, happen. Nice. The puck can go out of the edge of the ice and get stuck in in well in the wall, and then fall through the map. Because <laughs> yeah. video, video games. That's okay. He chucks another one in, so it's fine. And, and then he goes back to the exact same place. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. I think these keepers go. Yeah, there we are. There you go. Nice. Yeah, your, your goalie doesn't pass to you though. So okay. it says a lot. This is a great chance to just like express your express your anger at hockey to the world. <laughs> yeah, this, the best thing is this isn't even the worst part of the game. That's coming next. <laughs> oh yeah, fish. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. We'll rant about that when we get to it. <laughs> Thirty-two pork. But yeah, you can see this setup basically. Like we want to hit that guy, leave him back there, get in line, and then just rob the puck. The annoying thing is that your keeper isn't quite as nice as their keeper. He just fl flings the puck any which way. <laughs> yeah, and the angle that he goes at as well is also slightly different. So sometimes you just lose time to skill carry point. bounces. Yeah, so that's the end of this hockey challenge. What's coming up now is a trick called the Sproda Man. Oh <laughs> no, oh yes. no. <laughs> it's time. Uh, essentially, you kind of like do some... Well, you, it's almost a wall glide. You're almost gliding against the wall, but you're charging as well. And that helps you maintain slash gain height. So there, you saw that. Just kind of like wiggled against the wall and he gained height and got somewhere that he wouldn't ordinarily been able to got to get to with just a charge jump and a glide. Yeah, yeah. there's lots of cool spread in this game, but I'm not really any in this character. Yeah. yeah, it um the fact that double jump exists in this game helps a lot as well because in some of the other game or in Spyro 3 specifically, doing uh, Sproda Man's you don't gain any height, you can essentially maintain it if you're doing them well. But in this game, because every time you're doing that, the Sprodoman inputs are essentially the same as a double jump, and so you'll get extra height each time you're you know, doing a successful one. So, um, as you saw there, Drash finished up the end of the statue challenge, and there's a small delay before you get teleported back to the professor. So, he took that time to collect a couple more gems, that just saves a little bit of time. And then we're just going to clear out the last gems in this bottom area, which we had no re reason to visit earlier. And that's what's done with the Colossus. So the next level coming up has the real RNG in the run. Um, it's called Idle Springs. It's got a puzzle challenge in three parts. And one of them is essentially completely RNG. You have to put fish into an idol. It's a very good puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's OK. I believe in perfect fish. <laughs> I don't. The sad thing is, this is a really cool level. but. This just dictates everything so much. You can just lose a minute. Yeah, there's a lot of nothing, nice movement so. and stuff in this level and like cycles to work with. But it's kind of just completely ruined by this one really long yeah. instance of being stood still waiting for a fish to hop out of water. Yeah. It's funny because the um, old 100% uh, ER route used to end on Idle Springs. So your entire run will, you know, <laughs> yeah. decided on whether or not you, you can got watch your PV bleed away <laughs> as these fish refuse to yeah. jump out of the water for you. Yeah, so luckily now we end on icy speedway. Spoilers, whoops. And um, it was it's a faster. slightly heartbreaking time. Yeah. Okay, so if you played this game casually, this puzzle might have given you a few problems unless you're <laughs> more quick Big than brain. Me. <laughs> yeah. But essentially, you can. Well, the trick is just land on the corners. All four corners, and you solve the puzzle. If you mess it up, you can get stuck for hours if you. Well, I'm good at puzzles. <laughs> and now coming up, we have the fish challenge. So essentially, this tiki or idol head or whatever he is only likes. What is it? Orange and blue fish? He hates red fish. If you feed him a red fish, he'll throw all the fish back, back out of his mouth. So just we just have to wait for... <laughs> Not all. Just throw his three fish up. It's yeah, that's the one. Cool. This is it. This so we have it. to basically wait for him to throw out orange and blue yeah. fish. But clapping for fish. No. Oh. They're coming quite quickly so far. We've had one red one, but... It usually starts like this, and then it just drops. Unfortunately, this happens. Yeah. yeah. Very common. 
That's and really, cool. there's really nothing you can do. Like, we've tried all kinds of manipulation. We don't really understand our game's RNG because we're bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, a lot of runs end up with you sat here for 20 or 30 seconds watching redfish jump out. And, and that can happen. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes the fish can jump out a little bit lower than you want them to. And if you fireball them at the slightly the wrong time, then they just bounce off his lip out of his mouth. Which is the most oh, wait, we have, we've had to. Awesome. <laughs> which is, yeah, the most infuriating thing which can happen in this video game. <laughs> it's fine, though. We've got three more fish to get in his mouth. Safety and then shots. we're pretty much done. We're pretty much... And then we're done with all we're, the... We're, we're done with the annoying parts of the run. Now, then, then it's just pure video gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> pure skill from now yeah, on. Totally. No RNG. Drash can't blame anyone but himself. <laughs> <laughs> we have one more fish left. Come on. There's a really cool thing after there this. So if you go stand in front of the NPC, you can actually cancel the teleport and you can just get the texture quicker than getting teleported there. Yeah, so that saves a fraction of like, <laughs> it's about half a second. But uh, one it's frame. Completely free. <laughs> so the deal with this level is that these tiki's are kidnapping your foreman, which are these green guys, and you basically beat up the well, you basically destroy the large tiki's face to free the green men, and then the green men open the doors for you. And um, there's gonna be a power-up that we're gonna want, we're going to want to use at the end of this level, which has a requirement of eight enemies, so we're gonna make sure that we've killed eight, eight enemies before we get to the end. These guys are all on cycles, by the way. You actually have to get to them at specific times. Or, like, a couple of them are on cycles. You have to get to them at specific times to... And um, if you don't, then the tiki's, then the greed guys will take ages to open the door and you'll lose some seconds. Let's do a really cool thing here. Just grab that gem through the wall yeah. and then come from the ceiling. <laughs> okay, you see, you have a dust back wrench. Yeah. That's good. So, um, as we were talking about this puzzle challenge before, this is the last part of the puzzle. The way this works is, well, someone else can explain it, because I, <laughs> I don't trust yeah. myself. You just jump on them in a specific order. Yeah. Uh, they're meant to be related to each other in some way, but essentially you just remember the order and you're fine. Yeah. You can also and then do we it. do a flame charge at the end on those two vases to make sure those gems home into us yeah. um, That's an without option. needing to go back <laughs> down, because those two vases would be really out of the way if we needed to get them at the end of the level, so it's really nice to be able to get them there. Yeah. So then that proxy that just happened, where Drash got flung up into the air by jumping in the chest, that's another proxy like he did on the penguin earlier. It's not just limited to dead bodies. If you go inside any hitbox that you're not supposed to be in, you can get flung out at different angles. Yeah. You can also so, do it while the chest is closed, but it's much yeah, yeah. harder. So coming up now is the supercharge area. The goal here is to break all six of, the, uh, all six of these TK heads, and Drash is going to be doing quite specific movement to go fling out wide, He's going nice. to hit the last one with a fireball and then glide backwards, and what that allows him to do is get all of the gems in the first pass. Usually, like what, what used to be done um, at the time of this run in 2016 was that you would do two loops of this track, you get all the gems, then you break all of the break all of the heads. But this saves quite a few seconds, and then you can oh, Let's try you again. can supercharge up that rock. Are we going to go for it again? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can use this. Okay. Rock <laughs> all right, one more one time. More <laughs> there there we go. go. So yeah, you can use this rock as a ramp, which is pretty cool, and then supercharge around. Collecting gems, oh, so we got all the reds, that's the important ones. Yeah. And then we can just double jump up here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> double jump up here, get the last gem that we missed. And then we're into the talisman room. So yeah, um, the first 14 levels, oh, nice. like I said, have talismans, you collect all 14 of them, and they let you into the second boss. We've already been into the second boss, so we don't really need them, except for our 100% requirement. So what Drash did there was he delayed his charge input until like the last possible frame, I guess. Um, and he was able to talk to the guy who gave you the talisman and grab the gems off to the side as well. Yeah, it's essentially like a slingshot effect. You kind of like sling, um, slingshot through the text box and you kind of fly back and then the text box drags you back and that lets you often pick up a couple of extra gems for the cost of frames. So that's just done with this first section of Summer Forest, except for we now have a platforming puzzle. The idea of this, <laughs> this challenge this is, is essentially to teach you to jump in the game because it's right at the start of the game. You've already had to jump a few times in Glimmer, but you know. Um, <laughs> So yeah, you basically follow Hunt around and jump do these jumps. They're very trivial, like especially when you have like a double jump. It's like you can just double jump them blind. Yeah, he, he talks about you know needing to make sure you like walk right up until you're gliding and everything. You can just like stand here, do a normal glide. You'll make yeah. it without even like having for to that hover. One you're supposed to hover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah ironically, there's a much harder jump immediately after this. So yeah. yeah. Far, which I, is not intended, but so we this, do it anyway. So this all on this ledge is supposed to be hidden at the end of a hidden water tunnel which we're going to swim down backwards. Ooh, you're, supposed nice. to come, you're supposed to come to this from the opposite direction, from the very start, after you both swim. We do that jump to skip this tunnel, well, to get to this end of the tunnel, because we want to go to this to, um, this end. Well, we basically want to be in this pool of water to get another swimming air. So swimming airs aren't limited to just diving through planes of water. We can also dive like this. So, we're in, so basically we're going to nice. start a swim, and then the ground's going to pop us up out of the surface. So we're not actually locked into the body of water. We just yeah, get a that, swim state the, in the, in, on land. The wave animation yeah. for like diving in the water sort of pushes you out a little bit, 
And on ledges like that, where it's, um, you know, that the edge of the water is really close to an edge of, um, you know, land, that animation can push you out and up over that little lip, and we get swim in air like we see here. So now we're going back in bounds. Um, and so usually you have to talk to Alora to open that hole. It's a free orb requirement, which isn't a big deal, but it's just we get to skip the text box by going underground and then just swimming into the pole where, where it's stored. Uh, this is the second speedway of the run, Ocean Speedway. This is a little bit more technical than the last one. You see, we're using the fireball lot here to hit all these boats. Uh, and then this car. So you can actually, the fireball is actually hit by the floor. Yeah, the fireball hitbox actually travel through, flo through the floor. They have a radius to them, it's, which isn't blocked by walls, as we, as Pastor mentioned earlier when we hit some gems. Um, but yeah, essentially. Um, wow. <laughs> it's alright. This is fun. <laughs> you have to wait for these normally, anyway. At least yeah. one of them. Oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> <That's pretty cool>. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably lose the cycles yeah, so at the end. There's going to be some boats in random places yeah. now because of that small mishap. Yeah. yeah essentially, um, you can. You're also, you're constantly in a supercharged state in speedways, as I mentioned. So you can do a lot of uh, fast movement on on land. On land, and that's actually a bit faster than just flying around. So this one bird's going to be a far away. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's, uh, um, as with Canyon Speedway, there's another orb challenge coming. Um, orb challenge coming up, and that, this one's, this one you can save time in. It's not, you're not just sat in a ship firing bullets. <laughs> you're basically following Hunt around a track of rings, and you can basically sequence break it. I think, I think Very badly, yeah. Right like he um, doesn't travel as fast as we like, as we'd like him to. <laughs> So essentially, we're just going to go uh, hit the like, duck and dodge through random rings that he that, that he were not intended to go through until much later in in the challenge. Yeah, and that so, saves a bit of time at the end. Yeah, yeah, because he goes through the same path every time. As long as we're rooting rings in between, where we can still get to the one that he's going to next, while getting some extra ones, it allows us to cut off um, essentially an entire loop around a tower. Yeah, at uh, the very end of it. And do this area backwards as well. Yeah, so you just saw Hunter pass there. He was going through the ring one way, just minding his business, <laughs> while, we, while we've been destroying his course. <laughs> in, well, not exactly backwards, yeah, we've so kind of just been wandering around it in a random order. Yeah, but so he's really far behind me now. It's probably taken another like, 15 seconds probably to finish this. But, yeah, yeah, so this saves a lot of time over just following him around the track in a casual manner. So that's our <laughs> second speedway fully done with. We're not going to see another one for a little while. There are actually two of them in the Autumn Plains homeworld. The Autumn Plains is much bigger than the Winter Tundra and a bit bigger than Summer Forest as well. So we're going to spend most of our time there. So, um, so yeah, there's three levels left to clean up with Summer Forest before we end up, we progress there. So. so now we're going into Horikos. This level is pretty much essentially all platforming until the very end. There's a... One like there's an op challenge at the end, which is it's still all, all movement based. There's there's no like nonsense like Idle Springs waiting for fish. Yeah. There's no hockey. You can't there's no hockey where, we, wrong, where we suddenly start playing ice hockey in the middle of our <laughs> platform yeah. platforming video game. Wow. It's alright. Platforming. Wow. <laughs> platforming is going well. It's hard. <laughs> so yeah, um, this is this, this area is basically split into three. Well, this level is basically split into three areas, and the order that we're going to do these areas is one, three, two, and. Yeah. Uh, that just works out a little bit. You're supposed to like open these gates with light bulbs. Yeah, diodes. Yeah, but we can just jump all around the all around the level, up and over, on top of places. Uh, does someone want to talk about how, how you're supposed to get this orb? Uh, so you're meant to go through, and you'll notice here he mentions like gliding and all that sort of stuff. You're meant to use the supercharged power up that you can get in this level to break these fans and slow down the. Um, you can see the fans off to the right there that are spinning super quickly and you're meant to you know turn off some buttons and make those fans spin slower and so we get to this one now which is the end of the challenge without being on a single fan the entire time so, so basically that's like a long a semi long platform nice. puzzle where you um where you would usually be jumping all these fan blades and like up on ledges and stuff but we can just like kind of double jump over the whole thing and just get to the end straight away yeah. you're going to see that again in later levels yeah, so also, uh, by the way, these uh, sorry, um, these lightning gates are one way, so you can actually go through them backwards without you have to them. I was just going to point out that Drash got those uh, baskets through the actual. Scenery. Yeah, another example of getting baskets, you know, through a wall and having them charge in because of the flame charge. Yeah, so this is the final area of the level. The um, the third orb challenge is located next to the second area, and it's just a little bit out of the way, so it's convenient for us to end there. It just cuts out a bit of movement. 
So yeah, this is the second room, but it's the last room that we're actually going to do a lot of gem collection in. <laughs> oh, um, he went flying. Yeah. So he breaks that strong chest there so that the gems will be lying on the ground and it's a bit quicker to um, pick them all up like that than it is if like they're still popping out of the strong chest when you get to it. Ow. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, pro it's probably worth mentioning, by the way, that these strong chests are usually supposed to be broken with rockets or with the supercharged power-up, but the fireball just lets us blast them open. That's another um, that's another example of a use of the fireball. Like, it saves a lot of time. Yeah. So, so we do this challenge in a very specific order, so that the lightning thieves that spawn to come and steal all of these lightning orbs um, will spawn in exactly the same way every time, and it's the way we want them to spawn. So we'll see here, we'll put this one in and we'll go and get one last one, place it in here, pause for a second, and then go and get this one here. And oh, you nice. Know, that's <laughs> a proxy. So yeah, that's another proxy, that's a squeeze proxy. You basically you get Spyro stuck between two two entities. So in that case it was like a wall and a Enemy, big yeah. purple guy. <laughs> and the, the um, best way, it squeezes you up and pops, yeah. it pops you up. Best I think the best way to describe squeeze proxies is essentially to think of Spyro like a bar of soap. Yeah. And you're squeezing <laughs> it really hard and it just pops right out like that. So our lightning orbs actually went through uh, some yeah. sort of a wow, change yeah. recently. Um, nice. And now we leave the <coughs> middle orb for right till the end. And that spawns two uh, thieves at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Shoutouts yeah. to ethical orbs. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, do, so doing that the intended way where you just kind of throw orbs in at random and then just run around after these thieves trying to hit them. Lose, like, um, this saves like... I don't know how much it saves, but it feel, I feel like it saves, it must, it must it saves, saves enough to go for it. It yeah. must save minutes over doing it casually. Like, yeah. like casually doing this, you'll be, you'll be there for like multiple minutes. Whereas with yeah. this very specific set, um, order that we have, you can kind of just like run through and do it in like a couple, of, a couple yeah. of phases. I mean, even if you like screw up in some way and get one to spawn in yeah. a way that's not meant to you, you'll, you'll lose like 45 seconds there. Yeah, There's like, not really any good way to back anything up. Like having a system for that challenge basically saves minutes. Yeah. I would yeah. Say. So this level Sunny Beach. Um, it's quite linear. It's probably one of the smaller levels in the run. There's a lot of intricate gem gem collection that goes on in it. Uh, essentially, there's a there's a challenge to break a load of turtle boxes. The idea is that you basically kill ex however many enemies the power up is, eleven, and uh, uh, believe, yeah. that'll give you a fire fireball. But we already have permanent fireball, so we can actually just like break these boxes from the start. So that's the first one. There's a lot of baby turtles stuck in it. We're gonna free them because we're good citizens. <laughs> However, well, we're actually, we're medium citizens. We also left the turtles behind. This, this level is an escort mission. You're basically supposed to take a lot of turtles through the level by opening gates. But we can just double jump over the gates, so we actually just leave the baby turtles at the start of the level. But the elder at the end of the level will thank us for bringing, saving his babies anyways <laughs> and give us, his, give us his talisman. So and small optimizations there that you can get just based on the fact that sparks can get gems from so far away with the extended sparks range. Yeah, so um, also it's worth noting that you're not supposed to have climb at this point in the game when you first visit this level. So usually you'd have to revisit, but we, because we have all the abilities and fireball and all that good stuff, we can just kind of, well, we can just do the level in one pass, which saves a significant amount of time of obviously going through loading screens and doing going into levels multiple times. So yeah, as you say, see that guy said thank you to us. He thinks, well, in his mind, we've brought his three children back to him, or three. We're good know, Samaritans. The, yeah, the three children of his tribe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the turtle tribes. Yeah. So you see that last turtle box there? We're actually going to leave that, and that's we're going to use that to warp us back to that guy later on. We want to do this orb challenge first. Essentially, this chef's trying to make soup. Uh, someone, <laughs> someone talk about it. <laughs> um, yeah. So Condemn these <laughs> turtles spawn in. Um, like locations that we know where they'll spawn and so we'll run to those locations and you kind of have to like stop the turtles from going in to the uh, bowl some of us have tried <laughs> <laughs> very hard to prevent turtles from going in <laughs> and have issues yeah. um, there's not really much of a way to speed the challenge up other than just hitting the turtles as they come but like they're all in a fixed cycle so like the, the last one's never going to come out any faster no matter what you yeah. do really so yeah. you can just stuck here chilling yeah. also there's a thing to note we it's very very ill-advised to fireball these turtles. Once you fireball them, the hitbox becomes absolute nonsense. Yeah. You can charge into them from like underneath and they'll just like go left or backwards. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Trash. <laughs> it's fine if you fireball them straight in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you should know. It's just like, if you fireball them and don't get them straight in, then from that point on, that turtle's hitbox is just... Yeah, sometimes you'll just fireball one inside and you'll go out. backwards. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't really describe what happens to the hitbox. I'm going to call it inside... I'm going to say it goes inside <laughs> yeah. out. Okay. I feel like that expresses how, how ridiculous it is. Yeah. 
think that mm. describes it pretty well. It's got to be some velocity overflow, but I don't know what. That's yeah, weird. so that's the end of that challenge. And uh, now we're going to dive into this water and get some gems. And then we're going to um, basically press... When Spyro's swimming, if his head's up against a wall, he can fire fireballs straight for walls. It's not just a matter of the fireball crashing into the wall. It's actually out of bounds, this fireball. And it goes right down into the water and hits that chest. Yeah. Hits that last chest that we left behind. That triggers the teleport, and now we're back in the middle of the level. That's because, yeah, well, it's like um, fireball underwater. It count, oh, it's basically a different property altogether. And it, instead of like an actual fireball, it's like this white spike of. Yeah, it's like a water blast. I think it's a, a nice mine blast. or something. I wish so, I was like a mine. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Something. <laughs> so we've got, if you say so. <laughs> we've got one last level to deal with in Summer Forest, which is an underwater level. I guess I underwater level. levels are somewhat notorious in, in old games, especially for being miserable. This one's, well, I would say it's no exception. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of fiddly movement yeah. because you're trying to swim around and collect gems. Fortunately for us, we've extended Sparks' range. Sparks is extremely powerful underwater. Useful, yeah. He yeah. just grabs gems all over the place for you, which saves a lot of the hassle of wiggling yeah. around underwater. He's very powerful, but he's also very slow. It takes yeah. him longer because he goes further. But we'll see another example of sort of sticking Spyro's snout through a wall here and fireballing towards the end of the level. And, and so, so the way it works is you're meant to go through this level and hit all these buttons and fill the whole level nice. up with water. If you just hit the last one, then the end of level guy will give you the talisman, no worries. <laughs> you can actually get to the end of the level without doing any and talk to him, but he'll just sort of say, he says the end of level line, right? But he won't yeah, give you the talisman you the if you've not hit that button yeah. at the end of the level. There's a lot of weird uh, weird programming in this game. It's like, there's all kinds of nonsense <laughs> nonsense you can do where it's just like, why did the developers do this? And a lot of the time, so we've talked, well, According to the developers, from what we've heard, they had different people working on different levels, so everyone kind of just did things in their own style, <laughs> which is why there's not much consistency between like how NPCs work. Like In some levels, you can just jump to the end and not do anything, and they'll give you the talisman, and some they won't. Yeah. And some they're not even loaded in unless you've done the prerequisite challenge. Spyro 3 is far worse for that. There's like one level in the game where you can skip the scenes with triangle, but yeah. no, any, like, no other levels. It's really strange. I guess that's what happens with outsourcing. <laughs> when I regret this. Okay, oh. so, I'm scared. Oh my days. <laughs> it's easy shock. Yeah, so these sharks are supposed to eat you, but you can hide from them in the water, apparently. <laughs> I hope they're all dead. I don't like to do it because yeah, I'm a coward. <laughs> That's very precise, by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, um, yeah, so we're, we're going through this whole level backwards, if you didn't realize. Like, because of that button snipe we did at the very start of the level, we managed to go straight into the last room and then go through the level in a big circle backwards. This level is just a circle. Yeah. You would have awesome. noticed some weird stuff where we were swimming and then hit a water plane and then we were still swimming afterwards. And that's because we've gone to the very end of the level and raised that water. The, it doesn't really understand what we have and haven't raised and gets a bit confused with that. Um, and actually soft locks you if you try and raise some yeah. of the other water in the level. So this is worth talking about. This is a really bizarre, <laughs> bizarre skip, well, out of bounds. I don't know how it wasn't spotted in development, but essentially if you just point downwards and like charge into the floor, you'll slide forwards <laughs> along. So this whole level area that Josh was just... Um, kind of rubbing his head up against you're not supposed to be able to get to there's supposed to be an invisible wall but you, I'm not sure if you go under it but basically you just slide along the floor and essentially <laughs> get out of bounds yeah that challenge is intended you're supposed to go into six towers and dodge a load of obstacles and save baby his horses but we can just go straight into the top of the last tower and that beats, skips the whole challenge yeah, it probably saves minutes yeah, yeah that, that it's, also saves it's minutes. another case of parents seemingly only caring about a single or none of their children <laughs> yeah. in this game <laughs> And then this Manta Rays challenge, um, you're essentially locked, like, you, you've got to go through these bubbles and follow the seahorse around. But you can save a lot of time just by doing as much gem collection as possible, which is made much easier by the extended Sparks range. So, um, so you're going to see Drash kind of, like, wheeling around a lot on this Manta Ray, collecting as many gems as you can to save to save time. Because you're, you're locked in the Manta Ray anyway, so you may as well get gems while you're at it. So here's the second Manta Ray challenge, we're going to get more gems, essentially the same thing. Yeah. I mean, for the longest time, we just did absolutely nothing in this challenge, <laughs> and it just doesn't make sense as to why we weren't even trying to get <laughs> some of the gems. So, yeah. The, um, there's a funny little bit at the end of this level, um, at the end of this challenge, where you kind of like veer far off to the left, and you, you would think that you'd be yeah, here we are, and essentially you have to go through this ring backwards, or else the game crashes. We're not sure why. I'm not sure why. I don't know if anyone's sure why. Yeah. We just do it because it works. Well, it works on emulator. Yes. <laughs> but that's banned. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's the end of Summer Forest. We've got a couple more gems to clean up, and then we're going to go into the vortex that takes us to Arm Plains. And then we've got the levels there to clear out. So we're approximately, what, like, over halfway through the run. 
but we've well, and we've cleared out just over half of the levels because obviously we spent some time at the start setting things up, grabbing abilities, beating bosses. Nice. So yeah, one thing you'll notice is that we actually haven't been fighting bosses for ages. We what, what we really did was we went through the game, beat every single boss, and now we're just kind of forgetting about the bosses. We're just kind of cleaning up the rest of the world for the citizens. Well, if anyone's ever seen an any percent speedrun, that's basically what we just did at the start of the game. Yeah. Where you just boss rush. Hard to beat Sparrow 2 in under <laughs> 8 minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is actually, what Drash did there was a very recent route change um, where he went up the ladder. Usually we'd go to the right and clear out the bottom section then go up the ladder, but you can do this cool Elora warp where if you talk to Elora... Yeah, which you'll see in a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get teleported up to Fracture Hills. Um, we'll obviously point it out when it comes to... Yeah. But it means we do this level much earlier on in the run than we usually do. So this level's called Scotch. We're now at the end of the level. By the way, that double yeah. jump skips right to the end of the level. This is the last room of the level. <laughs> um, the reason for that is that we need to talk to an NPC who will start a challenge called Bombo, where we basically have to... Do a genie will basically throw bombs at us and we have to dodge them and chase them around the bridge. To knock him off his perches, he has three different perches. There's three different phases of the challenge. You're supposed to get the 20 power up, so you're supposed to kill 20 enemies, get the fireball power up, and knock him off his perch. You can't see him right now. That's just because of re a rendering thing. There he is. Uh, he's not. I, don't he's, I don't think you hit him. There. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so we're going to knock him off his perch. He's going to fall down, and here he is. <laughs> Worst challenge ah. of the game. <laughs> yeah, so this challenge is stressful. This, this genie is literally just going to fling bombs at you, and if he hits you, he takes you back to the start, and you have to dodge them all again. Yeah. You can do a bit of manipulation with him where the direction you were last holding before he throws the bomb is the direction he's going to throw that bomb. So you can do a little bit there where, especially going across that bridge, you can get him to throw them in a specific way and avoid them, but it, it's... So, so one thing that's worth noting here is that you can actually run around the inside of this ring. You're supposed to, the idea is that you're supposed to follow him, but because of the way that the range works on him, you can run around the inside of that ring and be completely safe. And then while he finishes moving, you can jump out and go and collect some extra gems while the challenge is finishing. So here's the second instant bumbo, we've knocked him down. Um, but before we go and actually follow him around, we're actually going to go to this other challenge called the monkey, which is the monkey's challenge. Basically, the idea is to knock these monkeys out of their trees so that Hunter can catch them in his barrel. There's not much to this one. Um, I don't know why Hunter's collecting monkeys in barrels, but there's a yeah. lot of strange things in this game, especially in this home world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, so, oh, I'm confused. Oh, yo. <laughs> so yeah, Bombo's just gonna wait there for us. Yeah. So yeah, Bombo's basically just gonna wait there for us, and we can um, go back to him at our leisure. <laughs> the only reason we're doing this now is because we happen to be here. Yeah. It's just literally just a rooting thing. You can do some interesting stuff with the camera here as well if you very quickly hit triangle and circle. Because the camera's in sort of this weird mode, um, it will just fire off <laughs> fireballs in random directions. You didn't, you didn't get the soft lock. <laughs> I'm ashamed. <laughs> yeah, so there's a very, very rare stuff like here, which has happened to two people ever. Okay, so now we're going to go back to this second instance of Bombo. So this will be two or three Bombo challenges. This is probably the trickiest one. There's like a long time that you spend running after him and dodging bombs. And we're going to deviate from the path, well, from Bombo's path a little bit to collect some extra gems. So you can see him flinging bombs. We're going to wander over here, collect some gems. <laughs> And we're going to re-meet up at the, bridge, at the bridge that we've been crossing a couple of times. And the reason this is scary is because yeah. of that, oh. where you're going around that corner essentially completely blind and have no idea where he's throwing the bombs. Yeah. So here's what I was talking about. You can run around the inside of this ring. You're supposed to follow him up the stairs, but the, he, the ring works apparently, and it's faster, so why not? It's also worth noticing that um, we, the reason why we skipped right to the end is that bridge that we go over isn't actually up until you fireball that button underneath Bombo on the third or on the first loop. Um, so we just go right to the end, go out of bounds and hit the button so it's down so you can just do Bombo. Yeah, so now we're going back to the start of the level which is where the third instance of Bombo is. So this is another great example of the fact, nice. of the fact that there's a lot of backtrack intended backtracking which we can skip by doing the level backwards. <coughs> Did I get that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You go. yeah you're good. Yeah, you're good. Um, it's yeah. worth noticing that, like in um, like 2015, um, yeah. thanks to a very casual runner <laughs> <laughs> called Venominus, <laughs> uh, we found out that the way Bomber works on um, Phase Three is that he's, uh, he has one checkpoint, which is right here. So all you have to do is just cross it, and then you can just go on your yeah, merry way. So that's why Bomber is chasing us. Yeah, he's like throwing bombs backwards, as in he's throwing bombs still as as if he thinks that we're chasing him, presumably, but. We're actually miles ahead of him, and he's going to—he's going to catch up during this he's talisman gonna animation. Give us a I mean, he's going to hit us with his carpet, basically, <laughs> any minute now. 
It's the wingman. There we are. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> so yeah, that's the end of the level. I think nice. <laughs> it sounded like it. Yeah, <laughs> it's ended. <laughs> yeah, so that's like one of the more frustrating challenges in the game dealt with. Yeah, it's quite a hard level to be honest. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So now we're gonna nose dive back down this ladder, I believe. I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Is the next level Breeze Harbor? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. But as Venom said, the route changed recently, so. Things a bit up in the air for me. <laughs> <laughs> Drash here never screws up Breeze, so we're all, we'll, be okay. <laughs> we'll be okay. Yeah, we're gonna collect a couple more gems that we left behind. These were underneath us when, um, when while we were doing all the fancy platforming to skip into the second <laughs> boss. Yeah. So this level is quite infamous as well. It has a trolley, a trolley quest, a trolley quest where essentially we ride a tro uh, well. You're intended to ride a trolley and collect a lot of gears. <coughs> What you can actually do is just double jump up onto the track and collect them as Spyro, rather than <coughs> as Spyro driving a trolley. Yeah, but if you miss a gear, um, then you have to re the have to death beast and restart the whole challenge, so you have to make sure you have 50. There's also a spiky balls challenge, or a floating mines challenge, depending on what you <laughs> want to call it. Spiky balls. <laughs> <laughs> so these mines, you have to break eight of them, and the idea is that you usually break them with a cannon, but we have fireball again, so we just blow them up. And Drash is going to be in line with that one. He might have wondered why he didn't blow it up straight away. He can blow it up when he's on the track later. Oh. So here's the first one we just explored that one. And now we're going to jump onto the track and we can just run through these gears. It's not going to tell us how many we've got, but by the end of the level, we're going to collect 50 and hop into the ta into the orb room. And the guy will say thank you anyways, even though we haven't touched his trolley. So yeah, this uh, level is quite infamous for having the line, trouble with the trolley, eh? As um, <laughs> thousands upon thousands of casual players of this game have failed this challenge thousands and thousands of times. <laughs> so yeah, the, the idea behind the rooting of this level is basically to weave in and out of collecting gears and collecting gems and blowing up floating mines and basically trying to do that in as nice a way as possible yeah. or a way that flows together as nicely as possible. And so because of this challenge as well we then have a warp back to where we or where that first guy is to collect some more gems there and then we'll be back where we first jumped on that track and we'll be able to get back up there again with double jump or we'll probably use a clam proxy that hopefully we got to see. Um, and then we can collect the remainder of the gears that are left up there. Because the paths sort of split on the trolley track, um, we can do it in two passes and it works out pretty nicely. Another thing to note is that to get through this level the intended way, you're supposed to like, light all these boilers, which will like unleash a lot of contraptions. That's a small that proxy, not sure. but not quite big enough. So yeah, like, essentially these boilers will set up a lot of contraptions for you, which allow you to get through the level. But because we can just double jump onto the track, we can actually skip all of the platforming. <coughs> Oh, not platforming, sorry, the, I don't know, contraptions, like there's a boat ride, <laughs> yeah. there's a boat ride, there's like some water you can jump in, there's all sorts. Some yeah. pans and stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're coming to the end of the trolley challenge, which hasn't involved a trolley. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of like, you're not intended to be up here on foot, by the way. You're yeah, intended to be locked onto a trolley, uh, locked onto a path. So there's no hitboxes around this area. So you can essentially just jump off the track like this, now we're out of bounds, and nice. then hover into the room. <laughs> and... <laughs> There, we talked to him and he's like, that was great. I really admire your trolley riding <laughs> skills. <laughs> and he gives an orb. So yeah, now the um, last part of this level is involves jumping onto this boat. Oh, it's very slow. Yeah. <laughs> so um, usually you would like get set up another boiler and, get, yeah, yeah. and get catapulted onto this boat. Yeah. And Mosses. you would also like, yeah. <laughs> you would also light some fires and this boat would rise up. We can just double jump onto the mast or not onto the mast, depends how brave you are. And, um, I'm not get, and get up to this talisman guy. <laughs> Yeah, that was another example of slingshotting around to get those gems. Yeah, so um, so all that's left is to clear up a few gems. So this is where the catapult is. So you're supposed to get here earlier before you get onto the boat and get flung onto the uh, flung onto the boat. But just the way movement works out, because we can get onto the boat without doing any of that nonsense, it's easy to just leave these gems or faster to leave these gems until the end. Nice. And then we have one. One. <laughs> one. So yeah, um, now we're going into the second mystery jar level of the run. Skilos, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's going to be another mystery jar. Hmm? Wow. Yeah. Mystery jars are <laughs> stacked, are stacked, so stacked long at the end of the run. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, basically what we're going to do here yeah. is, again, we're going to do a double jump. <laughs> a double jump up to the end of the level. Up to the end of the level and then do the level backwards. Um, and it, Because we want to track back through the level and break all these instances of mystery jars. You'll see that in a second. Yeah. Before we start backtracking through as well, we'll start a, we'll do a challenge um, where as we're coming back through, there's these lizards that have bones, so we'll help a guy out, 
get a f his friend's bones back so he can watch her dance at the end. Yeah, so he's another rocket. So yeah, we could just break that chest with um, Fireball, but we made it <laughs> running past the rocket anyways. We might as well just let the rocket do it for us. He's the first bone guy. Um, so these bones are, can go flying out in different angles. But if you hit the guys in the right place, quite precisely, like Drash is doing now, nice. then you can kind of automatically pick them up because they fly onto your hitbox. Yeah. But Basically, as long as you aim at the crotch, yeah. the bone will just come straight to you. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. <laughs> That's just what we tell new runners to aim for, and it works. Um, yeah, so Drash did a bunch of... Oh, uh, Squirtle? Oh, nice. that would have worked. I'm happy. Um, he did a bunch of damage abuses to get up here. Um, it's really important to actually keep sparks throughout this level, because gems are just annoying to get without sparks, like you would in the oh, yeah. you know, we are it's route. It's very easy to be sparks in this level. Yeah. Yeah. We should mention that the intended way to get up that, up there is that the best of the power up in this level is an invincibility, which makes you lava proof. <laughs> but we can just take damage and skip that. And like, yeah, it saves a lot of time because like running through the level and killing enemies would mess up the route entirely because we don't see enough enemies the way we do it before we would get to the yeah. I've the killed eight the power and six of them have been the lizards. So yeah, so, yeah here's the sand flippers. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna. Basically, break this mystery jar. We haven't got to the last mystery jar yet. It's back. It's right just in front of us. But we need to finish the absorb challenge. So we're going to hit this bone. It's going to pull us back to the end of the level. Nice. But because this level's a circle, which is a common pattern in Spyro games, actually, um, we can now just go and get the talisman, which is at the end of the level, and then just hop back to where we came from and hop straight back to the start of the level with this um, little passageway that we came through. And then we'll break the last instance of the, instance of the mystery jar. Get the gems from that. Okay. Die in lava, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like a little orb challenge that we have to do where we're going to uh, stop some dinos from eating some villagers. Because once again, we're nice citizens. It's probably worth pointing out that uh, Drash just completed one of the missed categories, uh, Bone Dance, yeah. um, where you collect all the bones like as fast as possible. Yes. So, um, so yeah, this challenge can actually be quite... Well, also... One thing to note, firstly, is that Drash just double jumped over a canyon where you're supposed to have a bridge. Yeah. That's, that's not too bad, but it's, it's, casually, it's a yeah. cool thing. Um, this challenge can be quite hard for casual players. Fortunately, because we've played this game hundreds of times, we know the pattern. Of, <laughs> the, these, um, these eggs break and these dinos get released in a set order. So if you know where they're going to spawn, it's kind of trivial to just kind of run after them and blow them up. Also, having Fireball again helps a little bit. You can hit them from range rather than have, hitting them with Flame, which is intended. Yeah. And being able to hit them from range actually allows us to speed up a bit at the end here. You can see we'll land here, we'll kill that one there, and then we can break this one as soon yeah. as it comes out. So um, casually, and you save some time from having it run around like the back of a hut before you can get yeah, it there. Like casually, you usually only reach that guy by the time he's like about to eat the villager. So it actually saves like a non-trivial amount, non amount of seconds. Fireball definitely helps, yeah. Just leaving Skelos. <laughs> Didn't say it earlier. <laughs> Got. Okay, so um, yeah, now we're going to clear out a, a little bit of the home world that we left earlier. So in this pool, we ran past this pool earlier, but there was well, we didn't feel like going into it. <laughs> yeah, that used to be picked up um, probably about what's that, an hour ago. Yeah, less than an hour ago, well over an hour ago. Yeah. Yeah, like we on, we, on the first visit, but not anymore. Yeah. So now we're going to Crystal Glacier. So this level has quite a bit of. Um, quite a few skips in it. Essentially, you're supposed to free these Eskimos from the ice that they're trapped in, <coughs> and they'll like set up a catapult for you, or they'll like, act as human stairs for you. But we can just double jump over this huge canyon to skip the first instance of that. Can we? Oh, it's we a can, really, well, yeah, oh, thanks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is a really oh, precise very jump. very precise, yeah. Very difficult. <laughs> Frame perfect, somebody <laughs> sir. There we go. Yeah. And so there is a, um, a power up in this level for super flight. We could skip it in theory, but the challenge doesn't actually work without having the power of active. You can kill all of the things that you're supposed to kill for the orb challenge, but it doesn't. Um, but the the end of end of the challenge, basically the end of the challenge doesn't trigger for some reason. If I recall correctly, I don't actually know. No, that. he just doesn't give like the orb. I, I, yeah, I thought he does. It was just slow because. Yeah, I'm sure I've tried it before. I don't no, know. No, he Either definitely way. doesn't. I debate for another day. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do it now. We'll get back to you. Yeah, oh, we can test it live on stream. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not. Yeah. Doesn't sound fun to me. Yeah. Also, there's so, a money bags here usually who will lower this bridge for you for the fee of 200 gems. Nice. That was, that, that's that's pretty difficult. That, that <laughs> um, so yeah, that bridge is usually not there. You just have to pay money bags. But as we said earlier, all the money bags get paid for automatically at the end of the game. But yeah, 
we've already the, been. The uh, enemy route in this level is actually really tight, so you need to be sure to be killing quite a lot of enemies yeah. before you get to the end here. Um, you can see we've got 13 now, we need 15, um, and so the last couple will be on our way back to the power-up. Yeah, so... Um to get into this talisman room ordinarily, you're supposed to free the es free some Eskimos and then they'll like blast the door open with a snowball and flatten their chieftain. <laughs> but yeah, we can just double jump in through the roof. Since they didn't expect anyone to be able to reach the roof, they made it non-solid, which is similar to what we were talking about earlier. And this is the challenge I was talking about. Oh yeah, oh, so we've got this super fly. <laughs> Um, yeah, so these draclets actually respawn. They, um, if you leave a draclet behind, it will spit out baby draclets. <laughs> or spiders, depending on what you prefer to call them. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically what Drash is going to be going for here is, is a one cycle on these Draclets. He's going to try and get there before they start all spawning again right around where he came from. Oh, still fine. Fortunately, they're a little tight. bit fiddly. They swing around and they can be irritating to hit. Your fireballs can sometimes just sail past them. If you just try to shoot the last one first, it shouldn't yeah. do it. So there we are. So nice, we, nice. So Drash managed to hit that last Draclet well, while he was winding up to spit out yeah. another baby Draclet, which saves a bit of time. Uh, this last part of the level is a little bit auto-scrolly. Basically, we're um, escorting a snow leopard called George back to his master, <laughs> or owner, or friend, I don't know. And we're going to lure him around the, the above. yeah, <laughs> we're going to lure him around the area with fish. <laughs> and that's I think that's, there's not really a way that we're aware of to speed up this challenge. You just kind of got to do it. It's not completely all this. Put a bounty on it. Yes, yeah, you can take like, a second. There's also. something weird that goes on with the speed that George walks, but yeah, he walks around that burn differently. Nobody really stand, has a good grasp on exactly what's going on. <laughs> with his movement speeds. Yeah, if he rubs against a wall, he seems to walk faster, but maybe I'm crazy. There's yeah, also well. some small elements of RNG uh, as to how these fish actually jump out of the pond. So they can jump out either earlier or later, um, depending on, you know, small differences in what happens beforehand. So you can see that one jumped out very quick, but the one we saw first probably took a second or two when George got to the pond. Yeah, yeah this is a little bit of downtime in the room. There's a... <laughs> If you want to talk about anything, you can say that uh, talk about Superfly Jump that I did after Draclets. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. So um, so to get back up to this area, actually, you saw Drash kind of suddenly gain a lot of height when he was just doing like a horizontal Superfly. Basically what you do is you do a double jump input, which is a jump and then charge input, but while you're flying, and you like hold down on the D-pad. Hurry. <laughs> um, and that, that essentially propels you up into the air. That's going to come in handy a little bit later. I'll talk about it, how we'll talk about it again when it, when it appears again. But essentially all you need to know is that you do like a jump and charge input while you're holding down on the D-pad and it flings you up into the air while you're super flying. So yeah, we're getting quite far through this courtyard. There's, um, as I said, there's 10,000 gems in the run. We're on like about 7,500 right now. So we've got about three quarters of the gems in the game. It's time for everyone's favorite level. Yeah. So this is another level that you're supposed to pay money bags 400 gems for and that portal's usually inactive. But um, yeah, it's active <coughs> because We've already done the. We've seen the final cutscene. Money bag is gone. You He's can actually. For us. You can get to it uh, throughout of bounds, but it's so hard. You have to, like, autumn planes swim in air. I think only it's one like, person it, has done it, and they did it with lots and lots of safe yeah. states. Yeah, it's a, Shout it's out a safe ZPM. <laughs> it's a safe state only strat. <laughs> so yeah, um, this is another level with Mr. Jack. We're gonna skip right to the end. We've you've already seen a huge out of bounds there. We've skipped like a huge. This level is a, bi a big S shape basically. Yeah. And we've just jumped over the whole S to get to the end of the level. And the reason for that is that there's a Mr. Jarrah at the end of this level, just like some of the early levels. So we're going to want to do the challenges and stuff at the end of the level, and then go back to the start later on to backtrack through those Mr. Jar progression, through that Mr. Jar, Mr. Nice. Jar progression. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're supposed to use the cannon that you just saw to your left to break down the door to this talisman room, but we have fireball, so again, we can just blow the door open. <laughs> Ignore that TNT, it's not going to hurt us, don't panic. Well, it might actually, we were close yeah. to the small ones. The small ones do, yeah. it's yeah. a big one, doesn't it? It also doesn't hurt Corpor Corporal Glug. I think that's his name. He's not in there. He was wearing his helmet. Yeah. <laughs> Is he in there? I don't know. That's what saved him. You can actually get in there without breaking the door, but. Yeah, this jump's a little bit tricky. I don't know if you can explain it. Nice. So there's some weird, like, invisible walls around there, and you essentially need to go under one before you can hover up onto the ledge. And so that's what you saw there. We got knocked down, like, just a little bit. And after that, we could hover up onto the ledge and go out of bounds yeah. to get to this professor. So similar to an early level Horikos, um, this is essentially a huge platforming puzzle where you're supposed to plant a load of seeds and they provide you platforms to jump across. But because we jumped out of bounds <coughs> and like hopped to the end of the, um, well, hopped to the end, we hopped straight to the end of the challenge basically, and we've just been rewarded two orbs for basically nothing. Yeah. Usually it you'd is, have to like, grow yeah. a load of bean stalks and hop all around them. This is essentially the fairy tale level. There's like, yeah. well, I don't know if Bo Peep really counts as a fairy tale, but. <laughs> Yeah. It is um, it's a very level. important 
the order you actually get those two in as well. It would, and it might seem that way, that it would be faster to get the Juliet orb first, but if you talk to Juliet, it locks you out of getting the Professor orb, and so you would need to re-enter the level if that happened, so yeah. obviously so, we can't do that and still be fast. So this challenge that Drash is doing right now is um, basically a herding challenge. Little Bo Peep has lost her cowlicks and she wants them back, so we're going to like bring them back to the pen for her. And this is a very fiddly challenge. Like, these cowlicks can just bounce around everywhere if you hit them the wrong with a fireball. They're a little bit calmer with flame, but you can save a lot of time with fireball just by hitting them up ledges faster, because they gain a lot more height if you hit them with a fireball. And this is... Uh, players can lose a lot of time here, like, even, like, above average runners lose a lot of time here to, like, drash, to, like, world record to your best sex here. Yeah, it, ta it just takes a lot of experience and sort of knowledge and how they're going to move and what your fireballs are going to do. Like, you saw one there where Drash was able to fireball a wall to get the Draclet going in the direction he wanted. Come. And that just takes Draclet. a lot of experience to sort of get used to and figure out how it's going to work. Yeah, so the worst thing possible that can happen is that you'll hit, like, a wall or another Cowlick in front of one of them, and that'll just propel a Cowlick miles backwards. It's a bit of a nightmare when you get overwhelmed and there's too many Cowlicks next to each other and you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Drash is going to leave the uh, rest of the Cowlicks behind because it's faster to act get all seven in at once than it is to get five and then seven in or five and then another two <laughs> yeah bird i don't know <laughs> i think you hit, i think you uh, crashed into a bird and that yeah. just dropped my vibe sure. so he's gonna try and set that up <laughs> thanks <laughs> yeah so um this area you're supposed to get a fireball power up but we already have fireball so we don't need to because that's the only <laughs> way to knock these cow legs high enough oh, it's yeah. only two enemies anyway so. yeah, yeah it's, it's not a big requirement this one for some reason it's two enemies no one i'm not sure why it's a bit bizarre it's probably like a typo especially yeah. like 20 something yeah. and then they're just like mass on it <laughs> yeah yeah there's a lot of enemies in this level so it's a bit yeah 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 so just gonna go for a little bit of a sequence break here there's two orb challenges here oh, nice. nice. so, so yeah it. so the yeah. first challenge requires five cow legs, which are the first ones we did and then the last challenge requires two more cow legs, which are those ones that we just got right there um, so we can just talk to her yeah. again there and, and get, get two orbs away. and get two orbs at the same time, which is a nice little time save. You saw also in that last room that we broke the first instance of Mystery Jar. So now the rest of this level is basically going. To, we've done all the orbs. We're just going to be backtracking through the level, breaking Mystery Jars and getting the rest of the gems that we left behind. Oh shoot! Sure, um, go for it now if you want. Yeah, you can read donations if you like. Zephyria donated ten dollars. How is the event so far for everyone? Long time viewer, long time donor. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Thank you for the donation. <laughs> I personally appreciate it. <laughs> so yeah, um, as I said, we're, we're just backtracking through these uh, mystery jars. There's uh, not too much to be said. There's uh, also that balloon that Drash broke. I guess we should mention. That balloon is intended to be broken by the cannon, but you can just hit it with a fireball or a flame. There's not, it's not too, ex it's nothing too extreme. Yeah, you would have seen some others through the same level as well. But, uh... Yeah, most most of the time, like, nice. Like in levels with cannons, basically, you can pretty much always just like use your fireball instead of the cannon because yeah. cannons are a bit clunky and slow. So coming up here is the third speedway of the run, Metro Speedway. This is probably one of the fiddlier time attacks. There's like a lot of guys on bungee ropes that you've got to hit and kind of weave in and out to make sure you hit them all in time. It's another case there of getting a gem a bit out of the torque box range by charging past it. Yeah. Um, yeah so the first... Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, uh, you go, you go. Okay. Uh, the first time you talk to Laura, it gives you the uh, whirlwind to get up to Metro Speedway, but the second time will teleport us. Yeah, so so um, basically, on the, on the way out of this level, we're going to talk to that Alora again, and she's going to warp us. Basically, it's like it's almost like a tut um, a guidance system. So she thinks that you've forgotten to go into a level because she's like, you need more talismans <laughs> to get into this boss. Go and then she flings you to a level that you haven't yet gotten the talisman for, which we can use to skip a lot of homeworld movement, basically. So yeah, this is the fiddly bit, fiddly bit I was talking about. Nice. You saw there, like, a fireball just flew out of the corner of the screen that Drash had fired earlier and just hit, hit some bungee guy. Uh, you can lose a lot of time here to just like bad movement and bad aim. But Drash is a beast, so he'll be okay. Look <laughs> at that, look he, at he that. He missed a pigeon. Oh, <laughs> no, <he laughs> missed everything. Look at that, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this, um, there's an orb challenge. Uh, as I said, there's an orb challenge in all of the speedways. Um, this one's a little bit odd, the way that you speed it up. Does someone want to talk about this rubber band thing? Yeah, essentially the way Hunter works in this, and it's, it's not massive time save like we saw in the one before, but as you s get closer to Hunter, 
he, by doing all of this supercharging that you're seeing Drash do here, um, he'll sort of recognize that you're close and speed up a bit more so that he's always a bit in front of you. And so you just want to get as close as you can for him to, as Nguyen said, do that sort of rubber banding effect uh, to speed up the challenge a little bit. Yeah. And there's, um, at the end, there's a little bit of like platform, almost like supercharged platforming you, do, you can do just to get to the last package that you've got to catch. Yeah, we didn't say it, but this challenge, basically, you're catching these packages, he's going to shoot a thief, and they're going to drop packages for you to catch. Um, so yeah, so what Drash is doing here is he's yeah. kind of like deviating from Hunter's Path so he can get to this nice. guy and then just hop straight onto that package to um, save like a small amount of time just because you get to the package faster than you usually yeah, would. I, I think out of all the optimizations during that challenge, that little bit there saves like one and a half seconds. It's, it's massive compared to all the other small time yeah. save you get yeah. in that challenge. I think everything else saves less than a second. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're done with the courtyard area. We're going to get walked back up into the castle. And then all that's left for us to do is clear out the top half of the castle and all the levels up there. So here's this Laura walk coming up. So yeah, Thanks, now we're Laura. up here, back in Fracture Hills. So yeah. this was at the top of all those ladders you saw. If you remember at the start of this home world, we climbed up some ladders and went to a level called Scorch with the Bombo Challenge. Now we're back up there where we were before. And this just works out a little better in home world movement. This level is an experience. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, these stairs, you break them and free them, and they're going to open this the talisman room for us, which is in the middle of the level. Because we have Fireball, we can actually reach multiple stairs at once. So we can, as you can see there, there's a cutscene that plays after after you free a stair. If we hit multiple uh, multiple stairs at once, then we only get one cut site, cut cutscene, even though we broke multiple. So it actually saves a lot of time throughout the level to go for double hits. So there's not, we don't always want to because like the setup would sometimes take longer than the time yeah. save from skipping the cutscene. But especially for that one, we get to completely skip a text box that yeah. you would normally see. And so. um, you can actually break into this talisman room without breaking all this mountain, but this is one of these levels which is programmed slightly differently from other ones, where we can break into the talisman room, there will be no visuals loaded in, the baskets will be there, invisible, and we can get the gems. But the talisman giver, and the talisman giver is there, they have a hitbox I believe. But they just yeah. don't talk to you. Yeah. Maybe like that. We're not sure if like that text box trigger is stored somewhere else, like underground, and you just can't stand near yeah. where it is, or if it's just not loading it, loaded in at all. Well, it's like if you go into cheat engine and move it like one pixel yeah. to the right, like yeah. everything's fine. So it's just another okay. one of those developing so things. This is one of the hardest parts of the of the run for most people. Um, it's a very tight sequence break. Basically, you're supposed to escort this alchemist around the map, uh, around this map, and like knock Earthshapers back before they can hit him with their pickaxes. But because we've already blown them up with Fireball, we're kind of free to just let him wander around in circles while we go and do other stuff in the level. <laughs> Don't land oh. oh, I'm glad that didn't hit. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're going to collect a lot of gems and free as many, uh, do as many things as we can while this like kind of like fixed time sequence is going on. Yeah. And that just like lets us basically save a lot of time because we're doing, well, we're doing stuff while yeah. we're locked into a sequence anyways. So we would have hoped to get that um, Seda earlier, and now we'll just come here and break this, but... Essentially, there are just some gems that you can get if you do it optimally um, before getting that orb, and then we'll get warped back to Hunter here. Yeah, so as you um, see, we, we got that orb from the fawn, and that there, but then because we got there, because we got the orb in time, we've now been walked to Hunter, so we've done like a lot of warping around the land. Yeah. <laughs> well, now we've Hunter will walk stuff. out the door, <laughs> yeah, yeah. realize there's no earth shapers, and walk right back in and give you an orb. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, um, orbs in like so the idea of that challenge cool. was that you can now go around with Hunter, he hits the, he hits the earth shapers with a crossbow or a longbow, and um, then you head bash them and break them. But they're already dead, so that's why we get that orb instantly. But yeah, so those gems that we got there. If you do that sequence break optimally with the Alchemist, you can get all of those, and so you wouldn't need to do that supercharge that yeah, drags on there. Craziest Alchemist is very, very hard. <laughs> yeah, there's not many people who can pull it off. No. Especially not in like a marathon setting. Uh, yeah. Fingers crossed for no crash here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Sure oh, I've only ever seen it happen like once. Never in doubt. <laughs> to Alex. I've never had it happen. All right, we're good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was close. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. Um, so yeah, as you saw there, we did one more double. We we opened the room and like the textures <coughs> were a little bit glitched out because of the, all those doubles. Like not everything, yeah. not everything was properly deloaded from the explosions. And then as, as we entered the talisman room, there was like a white flash, which was the last one final explosion triggering. It's all a little bit messy, but it saves time. So yeah, there's not too many levels left. Three, yeah, yeah. two in a speedway. Yeah, so there's two platforming levels left and then a speedway. We end on a speedway. If you yeah. if anyone wasn't aware, feel free to send Spoilers. your complaints to. <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> the Spyro community, if that bothers you. <laughs> the person who changed the route sat behind us, just, I won't name him. I'm just riling the audience. <laughs> oh yeah, they're all angry. <laughs> <laughs> Furious faces. Okay, so this level's called Magma Corn. Um, there's not, well, 
But this level's pretty standard. There's not too much to be said. No. We're going to go through it. We're going to do some out of bounds. We're going to do a few skips, but there's not like a huge sequence break that's going to happen here. We will need some silence from the audience uh, in a little while, while Strash does popcorn, because there's a lot of sound cues that he needs to li uh, listen out for for him to do popcorn optimally. So hopefully the entire arena will be silent. Yeah. So, so all, <laughs> this stuff the too. <laughs> all this ah. stuff up here you're supposed to come back to after you, you go up a ladder and then you can get back to this area, but we can just double jump up this ledge, which saves a bit of time. And then we're going to go out of bounds here. You're supposed to go down this middle volcano to our right to get into this bottom underground area. Um, this is a 100 chance. Basically, you're racing him to pick up this popcorn. They're like crystal, but we call it popcorn because, well, look at it. Because <laughs> we're weird. <laughs> yeah. It's crystal geysers, one and two. That's what it's actually called. But. There's actually a funny uh, glitch that can happen where Hunter just gets stopped in motion. No one knows why it's caused or, you know, how yeah. to fix it. So this yeah. first challenge is a race to 10. Oh, and, so Hunter's, bad. Oh God. <laughs> and Hunter's quite slow. There's very, very little risk of losing here, as you can see. He's only on Don't three. Don't jinx it. <laughs> uh, this second challenge is a little bit harder. Now it's a race to 15, and Hunter's AI improves dramatically. He's going <laughs> to twist and turn and run quite quickly to popcorn spawn points. It's a four-star rating. Yeah. So if you're like worried about um, failing it, then what you can do is just kind of follow him around and snipe him repeatedly. But it's faster to kind of make your own path most of the time and just kind of grab as many popcorn as, as you can. You can save bits and pieces of time here. Like this is definitely like a lot of hidden time saving in this in this challenge. It's also really annoying because his hitbox is completely solid, and he will just push oh, yeah, you about. Good. and There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, like that. Yeah, so Hunter really <laughs> needs a uh, trip to like Biggest Loser. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he's uh, a little junky. What uh, Biggest Loser Avalar? <laughs> I think him and uh, Money bags. Bo Peep from. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> From Zephyr. Yeah, from Zephyr. Yeah, so we got a nice little lead on Hunter here. Oh, and nice. there we are. Nice, that nice. was a nice little, nice little seal from Drash yeah. at the end there to deny Hunter of one of those popcorn. So yeah, we're on 60 orbs. Um, as we said, there's um, 64 orbs in the whole run. We're going to get one more from this level, so we're getting very close to the end. Well, there's a few minutes left. Yeah. <laughs> there's a few minutes left. I don't want to worry the tech team. <laughs> tech just standing there with yeah, the button. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna um, clear out this area. This, this level's split into two areas almost. There's this nice grassy area, and then there's a big volcano that we're gonna end up in. <laughs> Usually you have to headbutt these um, Earth Shepherd, these other Earth Shepherd golem looking people, and then the fawns here will like, I don't know, body them in various horrific ways. Like, I don't know, headshotting them with a jackhammer, dropping <laughs> an anchor on them. Yeah. I don't know, like, yeah. various cartoony it's, things it's happen It's like a giant wrecking ball, I think, one of them. No, you yeah. need to go to the right. Oh, yeah, what category am I playing? That's <laughs> fine. Uh, Headbash, Headbash saves right. the day. Yeah, that, was, that was some excellent backseating. You yeah. saved the, the run. <laughs> Save the run. Thanks for the round of applause. <laughs> Too much Let's try that again. being done. Too much for 14 tally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so essentially in different categories, you're going to hop straight to the end of the level. You're not going to click because we don't care about these useless one gems. Um, in 100%, obviously, we, do, we wouldn't. They're not <laughs> useless why, anymore. Which is why we need to for them. <clears throat> Let's try again. So yeah, now we're in this. Now we've broken out about. Well, that was another out of bounds into this volcano area. Usually you have to take a long ride down an elevator <coughs> and then climb back up this elevator. Well, climb back up this volcano using all these ladders and dodge some fireballs. Ugh. This challenge is um, called Party Crashes. Um, essentially, the idea is to use these spit rocks, which you can see, to knock down these Party Crashes. They don't. They're not affected by flame, but we have the fireball power up, and hence we can just blow them up for free. Yeah, I've never said it's, I hurt this level. You can do quite. Um, Quite like nice, nice optimizations when you don't have fireball, but it's a little much easier to just like hit them with fireballs. Nice. And that so was we do a example. really cool sequence yeah. break here where yeah. we finish the party poopers challenge, and so we get warped to that orb guy. But then we also finish the level, so during that we'll get warped up to this talisman here, and we'll collect the orb just during that talisman cutscene. No, no. <laughs> rip. Nice. <laughs> that was hard. Yeah. yeah yes. So, uh, so oh, the way can. that sorry, the way that item collection works in this game, like in Fracture Hills, it's right. where it counts in your inventory as soon as you skip the cutscene for it and it's you know, yeah, your it's as soon as the texture up. comes up that yeah. you get the item. Yeah. So the end of that level was another example of the superfly jump where you hold you do, you do like a charge and then a jump while you're holding down and then yeah. when you're super flying it it flings you up into the air and that's how Drash got up on top of the volcano. There's usually a flight a height cap there, but you can break through it with your momentum from the superfly jump. So this is going to be the last platforming level of the run. This is another level you have to pay for. Moneybags will activate this bridge for you for 400 gems, but it's already open for us. And this level is really like a long escort mission. You've got to escort this hippo throughout the level, 
We're gonna save time throughout it by inspecting <coughs> gems while the hippo does his thing. He's like, he has like a large system of checkpoints where you've got to kind of be close to him to keep him going. And there's various speeds he can run out and like... But essentially, uh, you're gonna knock down a berry from these trees throughout the level. And it's gonna make this hippo grow to a gigantic size and knock down doors for you. Um, the, the, the main way of optimizing this level is just to collect a lot of gems while being close enough to him to keep him, to keep him moving. It's a this shame level though. also has a mystery jar. Yeah. Um, the the route used to involve like sniping that mystery jar from the bottom with the fireball, but now well it worked out faster to actually leave it and just get to the end first yeah. because this is a very compact level. It might not look it right now, but like the core of the level is all in this big middle area, and your um, all the mystery jars are really around there, so you can just leave it to the end and then clear out the the middle of the level where all the mystery jars are at the end. Yeah. One annoying thing to point out is that the enemies can actually eat the berries. Uh, which is obviously very bad because it means you waste time yeah. and you kind of just want to get the hippo moving as often as possible. So oh, yeah, you all notice yeah. we're killing enemies here as well. There's a challenge that require, or it doesn't require us because we've got fireball to have the power up at all. But for whatever reason, the enemy that starts the challenge just won't let you start the challenge if you don't have that power up active. Yeah, so, so this is like the only actual necessary use of. Oh. The only time you actually need headbash in the entire run is to start that challenge other than for the headbash rocks. <coughs> yeah. So yeah, there's really not many times that we actually need headbash due to having the fireball power up. So yeah, that's the last talisman of the run. We've now collected all 14 talismans and saved Avala. <laughs> and <laughs> So um, now we're just going to go backwards through the level. Um, we're going to do this lamp thieves challenge. Essentially there's these thieves that have stolen some lamps. We're supposed to chase after them and hit them, but we can just hit them from range. Here's the invincibility power up. Um, that's the one that was also in Skeelas Badlands that would have let us walk on lava. That we didn't get to see earlier. And here's the hippo orb challenge. So basically the idea is to headbash these hippos. You can hit them with um, fireball. It actually turns out fa to be faster. We found this from a casual stream, I believe. Um, if you <laughs> headbash one again. of them, then these hippos just start like flying out at you. And we didn't realize it for like a number of years. <laughs> and we just like, I don't know, I guess Drash saw it. What, 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 yeah. Would you like to describe your experience? <laughs> uh, it was me and Shaw sat in a call, and it was like, hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's essentially, like, it was this casual player, and they were like headbashing, a, they headbashed the hippo, and it was suddenly noticed that the hippos were flying out at a much faster than usual rate. So, yeah, shout out to casual streamers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it happened with Scorch four years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, so um, one thing to note here is that there's a small delay before getting warped by that, by the, nice. getting that last lamp, and you can, like, manage to make it up the stairs and hit the mystery jar. So um, basically, well, to get so you still get the warp, and you've also hit a mystery down all kinds of good of stuff, and that just works out a little bit faster. There's backups for it; it's not like a big deal if you miss it, but it saves a bit of time. And then here's the final instance of the mystery jar, and this is back at the very start of the level, as always with these mystery jars, and that should be the end of the level. Nice. So yeah, so we're almost done. We've finished all the platforming levels. We've just got one speedway to do, and um, I'll I'll tell tech, the tech team what time, well, when time will be. Yeah during the last rings challenge as there's not much to say about the technical aspect of the run this of, might be a challenge. good place to plug the uh as far as speedrun leaderboards and the discord if you're interested in speedrunning these games we uh, even for the uh reignited trilogy we have a discord up if you wanted to learn more about the game or even just you know hang about yeah essentially you can find all the links you never need to like want to run this game or want to interact with this yeah. speedrunning community for this the game or all the series just by going on the speedrun.com leaderboards yeah and the community is really nice if you get stuck on anything I just ask it. and <laughs> there will always be someone up to help yeah. you yeah. yeah so this is the last time this is also very fiddly there's um, a lot of hang gliders to be hit that's all they're all moving around and it's for, it's quite difficult like it's it's very difficult to see what the actual intended route for this level was <coughs> whereas the others kind of have like routes which you can obviously see the, the, the developers that intended you to take this level is much messier there's kind of like it seems like there's all kinds of routes which you could have been intended to take so yeah um, after we clear this up this is going to be one last orb challenge and at the end of that orb challenge is time is going to be time so um I'll tell you exactly what will be on the screen when, uh, when well, at the instant of time. It's normally fast to jump in the water and hit this last guy at the end, but I'm yeah. Play, so. yeah, it's a bit risky, um, but it essentially uh, lessens the delay that you need to wait there before it shows that you've completed the challenge. Yeah. So this is the last challenge. Basically, the idea is that you're gonna. The only way you really control Spyro here is just move left and right. You're just gonna go through these rings, and. Um, 
after this challenge, time's gonna be when six, basically when 64 out of 64 appears on the screen, that's time for the tech team. Well, if I was really talented, I could rotate the camera and do this blind, but I'm not, so... I have to do this the easy one. Oh. So yeah, we're, after we've got 50, 50 of these rings, we're gonna te be teleported to Hunter. He's gonna give us an orb, and, and um, that'll be the end of the run once, we, once, it, once the game confirms that we've got 64 out of 64 yeah. of the orbs. It's worth noting as well that this is actually a really good run. World record's like a 136, 40... Two? Yeah, something like that, uh, yeah. By Drash yeah, so, so this is like a ridiculously good run for a marathon. Yeah. Alright, coming okay, up so time. Okay, so we're coming up on time in a very shortly. In three, Way to two, go. one, time. Oh, nice. So yeah, um, this, this run was timed at RTA, so this is actually a, 130, a high 138. Yeah. As there was 18 seconds of cutscenes at the very start, which we don't, which we don't time in leaderboard timing. Cool. So that's actually only two minutes off record in an hour and 40 minute category. That's that is it's very, impressive. very good. Yeah, well done, <laughs> It's a beast. I told you. I told <laughs> you from day one. <laughs> yeah. So thank you all for watching. I mean, you can you can sign us off. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for these guys for commenting. I didn't say much, but I'm bad at multitasking and. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, wait, we need to pause we're pausing for a photo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>